All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Massacre series. Credit to Simo and Hossman for inventing it. Now, let's get back to the series. So, I asked a few of you guys to uh, basically create deck lists for me to play, to try different things. Uh, just, you know, because a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll do... I'll pull cards and you guys will play that and play that and play that and you guys uh, obviously it, it's just too many cards to ever like try all at once but finally I asked some of you guys to make some deck lists and we're going to be trying some of them so I've got three cool deck lists that I saw uh, honestly I might even make this a part of the series permanently where you guys can just post a deck list down there and if I think it's cool I'll just start playing it uh, but these are some of the ones that you guys like the most so I've got three loaded in here that we'll try over the course of the episode this is actually a going second uh, deck here that is uh yeah, it's a going second deck uh, that is a, a chaos going second deck. I tried it out in the solo mode. It was actually really fun to play. Uh, like I said, it just depends on the matchups we get. Uh, the only thing that was omitted was Crusader Avermax out of the deck list. I think there was just another, like, Link monster in here. Um, I don't know if perhaps you forgot the Crusader Avermax or not, but I just threw it in there because I was like, I'd rather play Crusader Avermax than one of the random Link monsters that we had here. Or it was maybe it was a random Exceed monster or something like that. So I cut that and I included the Crusader Avermax instead. And uh, that's the only change I made. Other than that, I'm playing the deck exactly the same way. Honestly, I could even cut this and play it exactly the, ex the same way. But I, I don't know. Crusade Aver Max just seems kind of crazy. Uh, but let's try this deck list first and see how we do. All right. We just lost the coin flip. The hand's looking pretty good. That is a pretty solid hand. We've, we have Iron Dragon, uh, Tiamaton. We have the Indigo uh, Mech Knight, which is a free special summon. 2400 attack. Not bad. We have the Cosmo Dogfight Fighter, which is special summon for free off of Good Witch. Our opponent is playing, unfortunately, Super Heavy Samurai, which is like essentially uh, a tier one deck. So I don't know how well we'll do exactly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best. I'll try to stick it out. It is a going second deck, so I I did get what I intended or I set out to get. Uh, so that I guess is fine. Yeah, I would have chosen to go second even if I lost a coin flip. But yeah, this deck is interesting because it cut out a lot of things uh, like the barrier statue. I think this is the first time we're playing a deck without there can only be one in it, which is also quite interesting. It's playing some of the going second cards we pulled like Sword of Concealing Light uh, and uh, Book of Lunar Eclipse and uh, what else? Like Back to Square One, Lightning Storm, or Lightning Vortex, I should say. Stuff like that. It's a, I thought it was a pretty cool deck, so uh, it's definitely the first one I'm going to try here. Also, I guess while our opponent is comboing off quite hard here, uh, this would be a good time to talk about uh, the sponsor of our channel, which is the Untap GG uh, promo, uh, companion here. It basically allows us to see our deck even during the middle of our duel, which has been useful throughout the series. Uh, but actually, they are doing a free giveaway where five of you can get the premium service of, of the Untap GG companion, and you can see things like personalized stats and tier lists and uh, the win rates of certain decks. You can see all of those things free of charge. Uh, five of you down below. All you have to do is just put your favorite card that you've seen pulled in this series. Uh, the, th the card that you think helped us the most. Just put that down below and I will respond to five of you. Send you guys absolutely free codes. And you can try the premium service 100% free of charge. Uh, like I said to the untapped GG companion. And if you want to just download it just for free and use the regular service it, uh, it's in the um, in the description down below uh, you can just download it and you can have this awesome deck companion which will let you see exactly what you're playing how many copies you have left in your deck so you always kind of know uh, how much of everything that you have left but back to the show let's continue watching this dude combo off now one thing i will say is sometimes i'll see the chinese name and the rabbit mate and the ip mascarena and I don't know if it's a bot or a legitimate person. Like, like I'm like honestly, I, I I don't even know if this is a real person or not. Because technically, you could program a bot to play Super Heavy Samurais. It's not a particularly difficult deck to play, especially if you know the combos. And I swear, every time I see Chinese letters, IP, and the Rabbit Mate, like specifically this combo exactly, it's you. A lot of the times, it's actually quite often Super Heavy Samurais. Oh, so. Uh, I guess we'll have to see. This might actually be a bot also. All right, so our opponent ended on a Therion King Regulus, IP, uh, the Bow of the Goddess, and Baron de Fleur, which is, I mean, this is a, a breakable board. He's got, what is it, three monster negates on this, then a, a Omni negate, and a Therion King Regulus. This is a summoning mechanic, so I can summon this without much concern. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and summon that. Now the thing that I should probably do is just crash into I, into the Appaloosa. 
Because if I ap activate the Tiamaton, it doesn't really do anything right now. So we might we might have to do a couple of tricks here. Yeah, I think we have to we have to crash this because again, I, I this is three negates and we have a monster effect, a monster effect, another monster effect. Uh, we we have to we have to go to battle phase and wipe this out. So we're gonna go to battle phase and we're gonna crash the Appaloosa. And that way we can actually start playing after this. So we're going to crash that. We wasted our battle phase, true. But he has high attack monsters anyway. So we would have wasted our battle phase no matter what. Uh, so now we're going to normal summon the Cosmo Good Witch. And I'm going to try again my best. I'm going to activate the effect to book. And I think if I target the this card, no matter what, he's going he's gonna to respond. Because they always respond. Yeah, exactly. They're going to respond. And then we can chain our other effect in order to special summon the Cosmo, the dogfighter thing. He's going to negate that. You know, what sucks is we don't have access to Tiamaton because we don't have any spawn trap cards. I mean, I guess we could have used it during the battle phase, but they could have just negated it. Technically speaking, we outed a, a good portion of their board anyway. And then they negated the Cosmo attack, the Cosmo special summon. Technically, they would have negated the Tiamaton anyway. So... Unfortunately, we're going to have to just end on this and hope we survive whatever he's got planned for us. But he, obviously, he's got Baron de Fleur and other things. Plus, he's got all of these searches. I don't think that this one's going to work out because we can't really do anything. You can target, special summon something back. It's cool that we added, to some degree, some of his board. But, yeah, he's going to add summon that back. Knowing this deck, that's 28 right there. We're at 75. He's got a full hand, both pendulum scales and the ability to get back into what he just produced. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and scoop on that one. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough. Uh, but I think against a lot of other decks, it would have that hand actually wasn't really that bad. It's just he did put up yeah, three negates. Well, actually more than three negates because technically Appaloosa, and then we had to lose the battle phase. It was it was a little bit rough. So I think may, perhaps uh, let, let's, let's try another duel and see how it goes. All right. We just won the coin flip, and we opted to go second after we won the coin flip. Our hand is a bit rough, but depends on what he's able to summon here. We've got Rocket Synchron. He's playing Black Wings, which is tough. Yeah, he's playing Black Wings. I don't think this one's gonna fly. Yeah, he's this is he's already up to a level eight here, and then he's gonna oh, and he can increase its level, so he's already up to ten if he wants to. So you can summon Master, which is difficult to out. Uh, one thing I didn't understand about this build at the time was Thunder Dragon, but I, I, he explained to me um, in the comments because I, I asked. Uh, but you can do cool things with the Thunder Dragon Roar, I guess. We, we might make some adjustments. Like I said, because like I, I, I saw that the Mech Knight wasn't in there, so I put it in. But we might have to make some adjustments. And this deck, like I said, when I was testing it, I was having a ton of fun with this deck. Because I was uh, I was playing in solo mode, I was going second, I was doing great. Uh, but just right now, things are a little bit a little bit rough right now, because uh, like I said, we've got this. This is essentially an unplayable hand. Thunder Dragon's not doing anything. Rocket Synchron is a good card actually. It works with like Absurouter and Nocto Vision, but Nocto Vision isn't in here. But Absurouter is. It works with certain cards, uh, but as of right now, it's not uh, totally usable. And then we've got obviously the Thunder Dragon and the. Chaos Sorcerer, which aren't too usable. Thunder Dragon has a different ruling in modern Yu-Gi-Oh than it used to have. It used to have a ruling where you could uh, discard it and then add up to two Thunder Dragons. That's that's the ruling today. But in GOAT format, for example, you could just discard Thunder Dragon for any reason. Like Even if you didn't have other Thunder Dragons in your deck, you could still discard Thunder Dragon back in the day. Uh, but obviously that ruling has changed now. You cannot discard Thunder Dragon for no reason. And then Daedalus is uh, essentially another Chaos Sorcerer. But like I said, we don't really have access right now to that. So we'll see if we draw any like discarding cards. Now, another thing I will say is that we're still in the first half of the month. So it is a little bit difficult right now to, uh, to win games because there's not a ton of bad players or bots it's it's mostly just the people who are supposed to be in platinum working their way up the ranks platinum and gold like real real platinum real gold real diamond players that are still like around here so this guy is playing a deck you could get to master with black wings like without a doubt you can get to master with black wings you can get to diamond with black wings black wings is a solid deck you can 
Like, it's, it's a very good, especially going first. Like, look at this board. This is not an easy board to out for any deck. We got Light Ray Greffer. This is not a, an easy board to out for anybody. Uh, you've got the Black Assault dude, which every time we activate an effect, 700 damage. Uh, we've got this dude's unaffected by everything. So how we're going to out it, other than Crusader Avermax, I don't even know. And then we've got, obviously, you know, a, a group of things here. Um, so yeah, just basically these three. But every time we activate anything, we lose 700. And then he's probably got some kind of... And then this card right here, the uh, Char... Sharnga. Um, which also has a quick effect to target a face-up card and destroy it. So he's got essentially... Essentially a really good situation for himself here. So we're going to activate Light Ray Greffer. Discarding Thunder Dragon. In order to special summon the Light Ray Greffer. That's a summoning condition, so we don't burn ourselves for 700. So at least that that is positive. I could Forbidden Chalice on one of these, but I mean that's just gonna make it more difficult for us to out things. So now I think we can go into, I guess we Link Climb, right? That's our best bet. We're gonna normal summon out the Rocket Synchron, and I guess we fill our graveyard now. We go Brute Enforcer, maybe. That probably seems like the right play because we have two lights in graveyard, yeah, and we get to. Uh, Light Ray puts us puts a dark on field. So even if he pops this, we get to summon Daedalus and Chaos Sorcerer. All right, he's going to activate the Blackwing card, as expected, which is which is good because uh, we literally thought that would happen. Um, so now we have two darks and two lights in graveyard, so we can summon out Chaos Sorcerer, and Chaos Sorcerer can help us out. Chaos Sorcerer can help us out one of these guys. So that's pretty cool. So we'll we'll act, you know Rocket Synchron, summon that out. Activate the effect. We're going to get 14 damage hit for 14 damage because obviously both of these. Well, actually, never mind. I guess not. Oh, now now the counters are on there. It's going to put a counter on our monster here. We're going to special summon out Daedalus, I guess. We summon out Daedalus. Uh, banish this and banish the other one. Because like we're doing the best we can, uh, but you know, it's a little, a little tough. We're going to go to battle phase. Obviously, this can't attack. This can attack. Does this have any usable effect? All right, so this card's actually not bad, uh, but again, you need a field spell for it to be usable. If only our opponent had a field spell, it'd be kind of cool, but they do not have a field spell. So now we just go to battle phase, we'll attack over this little monster here, the Harmatan. And that should be good enough. Technically speaking, we could have outed the full armor master, we could have crashed it, but it's not really going to help us. So we're going to attack, and then he's going to protect it. So now, main phase two, we set a card, and we just pass here. There's no point to do anything else. He can steal one of our monsters, because one of our monsters has a wedge counter on it, so he can steal it with this. And then, Forbidden Chalice. Forbidden Chal like I said, I would have tried to out the full armor, but this thing apparently can protect. Uh, so he's going to take our Chaos Sorcerer. He can actually use our Chaos Sorcerer here, too. Which sucks for us. Uh, I can't negate that, unfortunately, because he's unaffected by everything. But I can negate this with our... I can negate this with the Forbidden Chalice. I mean, I, it, it really doesn't matter what we do here. I mean, I, I can negate it, keep our monster, but he has more than enough game on board. So I'm going to do it, but I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Hopefully he doesn't find a way to, like, synchro summon with it or anything like that. So I'm going to negate it. And uh, also... Yeah, this card can attack the turn it activates the effect, so because he already activated the effect, he still cannot attack. So hopefully if we can get it back to our side of the field, we can do things with it. But that's assuming we survive. Alright, so now our opponent's in battle phase. Obviously they have plenty of attacks here. They have a lot of damage on board. I don't think that's game yet. Is oh, it, yeah, it is game. It is game. I just did the math. This guy's going to attack. Obviously this can't, but it's just enough damage on board. Uh, sucks, but I mean, it's it, it happens. Nothing you can do. All right, we just we just won the coin flip, but we chose to go second. Uh, we got a pretty good hand again. We drew Thunder Dragon. This again, I'm not I'm not completely sold on Thunder Dragon, but like I said, I try to be as 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 uh, you know, I try to be as as good with the source material as I could be. Obviously, because you know these are your deck lists. I don't want to change too many things. But Lightning Vortex, Thunder Dragon, and then we've got Tricky and Bestial Magnumut. We also got ringworm so we can go into things uh the hand isn't bad he's playing super heavy samurais and i'm pretty sure they're all earth so bestial magnum doesn't do anything but overall the hand's not not a terrible hand and we've got ringworm and stuff like that uh which can help us get to a level eight and then summon another synchro 
Uh, he's just going to pass on a super heavy samurai, one singular super heavy samurai monster. Which is fine with me. I have Chaos Sorcerer here. I don't think that we can OTK. But the other thing is we don't have a level 8 Synchro. Still, we don't have a level 8 Synchro. Actually, we do. What am I lying about? Uh, we have the Paladin. So I'm trying to see if... Can we OTK here? Do we have the means to OTK with what we have? We have the Tricky and the Lightning Vortex. Which can put a light and a dark in Graveyard. Which I don't know if that's enough. And then we've got... Yeah, I don't know if that's enough. So we're going to summon Tricky. That goes without saying. So we're going to discard the Thunder Dragon for the Tricky. Yeah, we're going to discard Thunder Dragon for Tricky. Special summon that out. Then we're going to... I think we special summon... Actually, I think we just normal summon out the Ringworm. And we go into... The Ringo Worm. And then we go into Zeta. Yeah, we go into Zeta. Tricky's a great card. The only issue with it is it's not a light or a dark. It's a wind, which is really random, but... Whatever. And then I, I think I'm going to save the Lightning Vortex. I can go into a level 9 Synchro, but I don't think that helps really anything that we have going on here. So now we just go into Bestial Magnemut. And we're going to banish the Thunder Dragon. We're going to summon that out right here. We're going to activate that effect. I just realized if we had if we had Link Spider, we'd have 6,000 damage on board if we had Link Spider. Because then we could have used the token for something. I can use this Ringo thing. We're going to use this to special summon another token here. And now we have, do we have a light and a dark? No, we don't. We have a token there. So we can go into this, but then we'll have a dark, which I don't think is good enough. Yeah, we, we have a dark. It's not it's not bad. Actually, we do damage. We do damage equal to his monster's attack, right? Or something like that. But he has zero attack anyway. Yeah, we can inflict damage equal to this guy's attack, which is pointless because he has zero attack. But we have this Ringo Worm. Yeah, it would be nice with the Ringo Worm if we had Link Spider. It's... Maybe we include Link Spider because we have a lot of repeat cards that don't really matter here. Like maybe Lamp for Lankus. But this is a light, so I guess that can be usable. Uh, but we can turn this into a Link Spider do a little more damage. I think we just go to battle phase here, honestly. I think we just go to battle phase with what we have. And then it should be good. And then we have the follow-up lightning vortex if we need it. He's going to enchanted javelin. Okay. That is quite a card. We have an interruption, so that I think is cool. I, I think it's cool that we have an interruption. I think, like I said, we save the... We don't have anything that we really need to go into here. I think we just save the token and then the vortex for next turn and then see what we have to do and then we add Tiamaton at the end here I think it's the best card to add here we can go into apps router or something else actually we can go into apps router and then search and then and we can apps but I think Tiamaton is just better because obviously he's just crazy he gets the Papa Roe and special summon and then he's a level four so we can do things with this hundred eyes token like we can go into our level sixes with the hundred eyes token if we need to our opponent is going to summon out the Holding Legs, which is going to mandatory effect, bounce all spell and trap cards on the field. It's just fine with me. I mean, that's not really helping anybody. He's going to go to battle phase, probably attack over the 100 eyes token. Yep, he's going to attack over that 100 eyes token. We've got, at least we've still got a pretty decent board. And we have the Zeta. He's an interruption if anything goes wrong. He's going to end phase on this. That's perfectly fine with me. So now we're going to draw... We've got a Light Pulsar, which was an option. Uh, so we... I mean, we can have game on board here. We set this, and then we Special Summon Tiamaton out to the field. And then we can destroy this row, but that doesn't really do anything. And is that game on board, actually? 7,000 minus 800 is game on board, yeah. As long as he doesn't have anything, but we can also... Yeah, it doesn't matter what we discard. There's no point for that. So we just go to Battle Phase here. So we'll attack over this... And that should be game. That should be game on board here. 28, 2025, and that's it. That should be game. I believe that was a bot, but, I mean, I thought over, overall the hand was pretty good anyway. So, I mean, depending on what we played, we could have beat a lot of other decks. A lot of mid-tier decks for sure. Okay, so we've got two, uh, three Legacy tickets, actually. Now, this is what our opponent was playing. They were basically playing just a bunch of random garbage, but, I mean... So are we. <laughs> I can't really get mad. They have uh, Royal Rare Stardust. That's pretty cool. 
Um, and then we've got, yeah, a few, few cool cards here. Let's go open a pack. Okay, so real quick, actually at the end of the last episode, I, I won three in a row and I forgot to open a, a, a bonus pack here. We can open either any one of these in, in, in exchange for our master pack or we could actually open this second anniversary one of these to get a guaranteed royal rare i think any one of these would be kind of cool uh, at the beginning of the episode i think i'll just do a master pack right now but um we can open any one of those technically speaking so i'm going to go ahead and open a master pack and hopefully we get something cool out of this uh, but like i said i think i'm going to open one of the royal ones because those are absolutely random you just have no idea what you're going to get a uh, code talker straight up code talker gains 500 do we already have this no we don't just code talker wow this is like the the og this card's not terrible two effect monsters generic sort of um and then it can't be destroyed by battle or card effect while another card points to it and then gains 500 for every monster this card points to not not a terrible card at all uh jurak protops gains 100 for each monster your opponent controls it's already 17 so i mean that's not terrible right uh another pendulum this is a two scale so it's a low scale uh, we can target one monster on the field, increase its level by one. I guess that could be somewhat usable. Uh, Baryon's, Barkion's Bark. All right, so we have to control a Neutrion monster. Our opponent can't activate traps. Not really the best card. Uh, then we've got Showdown of the Secret Sense Scrolls Technique. Uh, this is really, really specific. I don't think this is going to be super usable. Then we've got Brilliant Spark as a Gem Knight card. I don't think it's going to be too usable. A Double Trap Hole. Uh, not really that bad. When it summons a monster, defense mission to banish those monsters. Not bad, but, you know, most people special summon in attack mode, and then we've got tuning gum. Uh, I don't, I don't know. This card's a little, a little odd. I don't know if it's going to be too usable. Nothing really too crazy out of these pulls. All right, let's open these three legacy tickets and see what we get out of these. All right, so let's see here. We've got a pot of the trick, pot the trick, which is a pretty weird looking card. And then we've got assault dog. A special summon any number of assault dogs from your deck and this is a new card so we don't have any others to summon anyway so not not really going to be usable yet but maybe if we get more but even re re in reality i'm probably not going to use it saber source is good that goes right in our normal monster deck uh because it is a really strong normal monster that definitely goes in this mucus yoke my uh, this is a really really not great card it can attack directly and then if it inflicts battle damage which has zero attack it increases attack by a thousand during the next standby phase and it lasts as long as the card is face up on the so it's a little slow we need basically this card and an equip and then if we attack directly then it basically gains attack points but otherwise it, it's just very slow because if we don't draw it with an equip card or a way to gain its attack points basically does nothing that is cool looking ancient sorcerer I, I can't imagine this exists in the tcg this is probably one of those ocg exclusive cards uh this creature is capable of multiple attacks no it's not it's a normal monster it attacks once I don't know why it says that on the card. And then Big One Warrior. This isn't too bad if you're playing like a level one deck. Maybe it can be somewhat usable. All right, so the only thing I'm adding is I'm adding Saber Source to our normal monster deck. So I'm going to save that. And eventually I'll just get rid of one of these other random normal monsters that aren't as good. All right, we just won the coin flip again. It's crazy. We win the coin flip a lot when we're going second. And then we obviously chose to go second. So I guess uh, this is the hand we've got. Our opponent opened Grass Looks Greener again which is crazy because we got it opened against us twice last episode. Uh, our hand is looking okay. Definitely not what they just had. Uh, we saw Thunder Dragon yet again, which is like repeatedly we keep seeing this one card that we really can't use, which is, a again, it's pretty unlucky that we keep seeing it because it's probably like, oh, it's just a one of, just throw it in the deck. But like it is, it's a card that we um, cannot really resolve or anything. Uh, now our opponent is playing Burning Abyss, and they open Grass Looks Greener, which is great. I don't believe that this is going to be a game that we could possibly win. They're playing basically like a Fiend Pile deck, and it honestly looks kind of fun. They've got Pharaonic Advent. They've got a lot of cards here, but they open the best card they could possibly open. They've got the Curse of Necrofear, which can special summon itself. They've got Dante. They milled 20 cards, and it's not enough. They're going to mill three more cards. Uh, but they're going to mill more cards. They've got, obviously, all of those cards going off already. Um, these float. The Dark Spirit floats. A lot of these cards float. I'm going to select level three for Reasoning. Reasoning is another dream pull that we could get. I wish we could get Reasoning. Uh, he is going to hit a lot of spells here, which is kind of crazy. He's going to... I picked it right. It was indeed a tour guide of the Underworld. 
And then we've got, what is this card? Void Apocalypse. This guy's playing every deck you could possibly imagine all in one. He's playing the Spirit Message deck. This is an interesting deck, I'll say that for sure. And then, of course, he's got the uh, Dark... Like I said, these Dark Spirits float. These float, as long as he's got Fiends on board. He's playing all of the Dark Sanctuary stuff. Uh, he's like a big Bakura deck with... Yeah, it's a big Bakura deck with Burning Abyss monsters in it. So it's a pretty cool deck overall. All right, end phase, he's going to use Skarm to add a tour guide. Now, I'll say this again, he used Grasslick Screener, and honestly, he didn't really accomplish that much. Um, but he does have a lot of floating and stuff like that. So we opened an okay hand. It's not the worst hand, it's not the best hand. We can special summon our Mech Knight. We can do that for sure. And then we can also use Lightning Vortex for sure. Which I probably am going to do first. I'm going to activate Lightning Vortex. Actually, I should probably activate Dark World Dealings before the Lightning Vortex. But I'm going to go ahead and Lightning Vortex first. Only because uh, I, I don't want... Just in case he has some kind of uh, far for or something. Or some kind of interruption off of that. So I'm going to discard the Thunder Dragon. I'm going to pop the Dante. Because I don't have anything in my hand that can get over the Dante anyway. Target 1, level 8 Fiend. Special Summon it. So he's going to actually Special Summon in response to level 8 Fiend, which is going to get destroyed by the Lightning Vortex anyway. I am fine with that. So he's going to summon the Dark, the Cursed Necrofear. He's going to summon that thing out. I'm going to activate, destroy that. And now he can trigger the other one, I believe. The other Curse or whatever it's called. Uh, and, and Dante too. He can, he can trigger that too. And he's going to Skarm, Dante, all that stuff. And he's going to, yeah, the Malice. He's going to trigger Malice, too. Okay, so he added back Skarm, Sir. Okay, that's all fine. Now, we do have this Dark World Dealings, which is a little bit rough because, like I said, it doesn't really help us too much right now. I'm going to set the Dark World Dealings right here. That way I can special summon this Mech Knight. Dark World Dealings, I really do not want to activate because it actually helps him more than it helps me at this point. So I'm going to Normal Summon the Good Witch. We don't have any Cosmos. Um, Naster doesn't really work unless you have another card. So I think we just go to battle now and try to do some damage. Like I said, where Dark World Dealings, like I said, he has a handful of cards that all trigger if we, if we use Dark World Dealings. He's going to add back the... Oh, he's going to Special Summon that back. Okay, so that's not going to work for us. And... There's really not much we can go into. I'm going to be honest with you. This guy kind of beat us here. Uh, because he just has too many cards that have... Like, there's too many cards that float right now for us to really win this duel. I, I, I just... He has way, 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 way too many cards in Graveyard that float. And way too many cards in Hand that float. I, I don't think that we can really win this duel with, 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 the, with the thing that we open right now. So we're going to be in a, in a needlessly long grind game. And I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. All right, we just actually, I don't know how we're doing this, but we keep getting lucky. We actually op we actually won the coin flip yet again, and we chose, obviously, to go second because that's the purpose of this deck. I don't know why we're getting so lucky. When we have a going second deck, we, we easily win the coin flip, and then it just, you know, when you go, you, you choose to go second, your opponent would have chosen to go first no matter what. So I guess we're just kind of doing what they would have wanted us to do anyway. Our opponent is playing a burn deck, I believe. I don't know what this is. So, I mean, it looks like a bot, but this could be not a bot. This could just be a person from China playing a burn deck. You can never really tell. They activated Tremendous Fire, which is not a self TK deck tech. Um, okay, so this is basically we probably should win this duel. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see what happens here. But our hand's not too bad. They don't control a monster, so we can't special summon this. We can can normal summon this and then we can special summon Absa Router out for free. We can summon it in attack mode because I'd rather attack than not attack. And then we have a few plays that we can do here. We can go into a Link 2, we can go to Crusader Avermax, we can go into a number of things. Uh, because if we link this away, we'll be able to search and then we can summon it back because we haven't normal summoned yet. Or did we? No, we did normal summon. Um, we can tribute this and then special summon a dark from our hand, which is uh, Dark Dragon. Summon the Vice Dragon. I don't really see what that helps, but. We can special summon this out. Let's do that. I guess we discard the Mech Knight Yellow. Special summon out the Greffer. Banish a light from our deck, which I don't believe really helps here. We can go into Time Thief. We can go into Brute Enforcer. I don't think that we can... Again, we, if we link away the Absor Router, we get to search. But we can search the Little Rocket, the Rocket Synchron. And next turn, we can use it to su summon out the Absor Router and stuff like that. We can do those tricks. I think we just go to Battle Phase right now. This is the most damage that we have on board. I think we just... Yeah, we just go to Battle Phase, start attacking. And... 
I think that should be that should be it. We just go to battle phase, do some damage. Mean phase two, we go to the the homeboy time thief because he is our best interruption as time thief redoer. And we just get into time thief redoer and we just pass on this. I think this is uh, plenty more than than needed. I mean, this is this is pretty good. Unfortunately, two of our cards in our hand were dead because our opponent is more than likely a bot that's not doing anything right now. All right, let's activate this time thief. See what we get. get some information on our opponent. It's, uh, yeah, this is probably self TK because when this card's sent to the grave, you're burned for 2,000. So we're probably more than likely playing against self TK. There's a lot of self TK on, on Master Duel. This is, the game's just full of self TK. I don't really mind because as of right now, we just have so many, I have so many gems in this game. I absolutely need to spend the gems because at some point they're just going to go to waste and I'm not going to get anything out of them anyway. So I might as well spend as many gems as I can while I still have a ton of gems to spend. So if we can get a bunch of master packs, I'm happy with that. All right. And we win that one. Obviously it's self TK. So we just kind of just attacked <laughs> and won the duel. But uh, yeah, I guess we get another master pack. Like at this point, like I said, I will take it at this point. We got one legacy ticket. All right. Let's open this master pack. Like I said, this one's not super well deserved. Uh, I mean, if we pull something cool, we pull something cool, but it's it's whatever. Like I said, I don't I don't I don't feel like I particularly deserve the wins that are just uh, just free wins. We got a War Rock card. Uh, I, we haven't pulled any War Rocks. Uh, Ad Ignister card. Uh, Dino Rustler, which we already have. Uh, I believe we already have this one, right? Yeah, we already have this one. I guess we could throw it in our Dino pile because we have a decent Dino pile. We already have their Raiders Unbreakable Mind. Gizmek Yada is actually a pretty good card. Yeah, this card is actually not bad, but it does lock you into uh, Machines, which is... A little scary, but it's not a bad card. It can help you definitely win games because it's essentially a free summon of itself. So you can normal something and then tribute it, and then it kind of locks you into machines, which is problematic. But it probably would be decent in our machine deck, actually. So we could throw that in there. Then we've got Fluffle Mouse, which is a Fluffle card. And then we've got Eva Swarm Nightmare, which we already have. And then we've got Contact Out, which we already have. That's crazy. We pulled four cards that we already have. Gizmic Yada's not bad, but we've pulled four repeats. Uh, not the best pack, but it honestly wasn't the best win either. All right, so here is our master pack. Let's see what we get out of this thing. Hopefully we get something usable. We've got Made in the Aqua and Genin, which is not that great of a card. And then Made in the Aqua, this is our second copy of this card, but we don't have any Legendary Ocean, so we can't use it yet. All right, so this is the deck overall uh, made by Benjamin Papian. Um, yeah, overall, I think the deck is actually quite good. The only change I would make is probably the Mech Knight. I would probably change this thing out um, because it wasn't here before so I would include the Mech Knight and then the other change that I would make is I would take out this Thunder Dragon and probably the other Thunder Dragon that's somewhere around here I'd probably play one of the other we, we pulled the Light Spirits or the yeah the Light Diana the Light Spirit yeah we pulled copies of Diana the Light Spirit I'd probably play this card instead because it's a free special summon by banishing a light monster uh, and if we draw her, we don't really brick. I believe we also pulled a dark version of her, too. Yeah, I'd probably play, like, a Luna, the Dark Spirit, and probably a Diana, the Light Spirit. So I'd play probably these two instead of the Thunder Dragons. Uh, but other than that, I thought the deck was actually really fun to play. Uh, there, were, there, were, there were a lot of situations where we were cl quite close to breaking meta boards i think we just need a few more really good cards and we can definitely do something with this deck uh i think this is probably like i said i'll probably add one of these one of these i think this is maybe take out the thunder dragons for now until we maybe pull colossus but overall i think this is actually a really fun deck to play and it was better than honestly it was better than the chaos deck that i built for sure i wish we could have played against decks that weren't bots but i want to give other decks a chance because obviously other other ones other people have also um left various decks for me to play so we're going to try a new deck all right next is this deck it's by the trickster and it's again it's a pretty cool deck it's got it's a dragon control deck and it uses some really cool um theories here so it's got most of the draw cards that we already use a lot of the interruptions that we already use barrier statues stuff like that but it also uses cards like uh, dragon made tidying and also cataclysm which are cards that are quite cool tidying is really cool because he left in the notes when he was like creating the deck uh one thing that's cool about uh, tidying is that you can bounce dragons to the field so you bounce a dragon the card your opponent controls but you can actually bounce magnemut you can actually bounce phantasme you can actually bounce um, for example the iron dragon tiamaton and then you can reuse the effects all over again i thought that was really smart and uh, really cool. You can bounce them back to your hand and reuse their effects the following turn, which I thought was pretty cool. It also uses a lot of interruptions that we use. Um, again, I kept it kind of the same way that it was. 
I believe, yeah, I believe I kept this one pretty much the same. It's got no synchros, which is, again, it's pretty uh, surprising. It doesn't use any synchros whatsoever. It just uses a bunch of Lynx and Exceed monsters that we have available to us. Um, maybe I would have concluded, maybe the level eight, I would have included the the one, the uh, the, dra the Pendulum mag Magician one. And then also what surprises me, it's 43 cards, but it plays, it plays the Dark World Dealings, which I probably wouldn't have played the Dark World Dealings, but I guess, um, I, the only reason I would play Dark World Dealings is if I was like at 40 cards and I wanted to definitely see something like a barrier statue or a there can only be one. But like I said, I'm going to try these decks the way that they are and then whatever does or doesn't work out, we're, we're going to change afterwards. All right, so we just won the coin flip. We've got a decent hand. We've got Kid Moto, Mateon, and Cubic. So I'm going to set these two and I'm going to, I think I'm going to normal some of the Kid Moto. Because I think this needs to target a dragon you control and one card your opponent controls. I think that might need to be, the monster might be, need to be face up because you can't target a face down monster because your opponent doesn't know if it's a dragon or not. So I'm going to normal summon Kid Moto in attack mode. So we have one interruption, then we have a cubic Vigom coming out if we need to. But our hand is is very okay. It's not like the best hand in the world, but it's, it's definitely not an unplayable hand. We've got Kid Moto. Uh, Kid Moto actually floats no matter what. You can, if this card's sent to the graveyard from anywhere, uh, you can special summon a dragon. Oh, that's actually great. See, that's like a really, really good situation. We're going to activate this. We're going to return Kid Moto, and we're going to bounce his normal summon, and he's not going to be able to use the Blackstone to get into either Red Eye stuff, or he's not going to be able to get into Toon stuff. So we just interrupted something. I don't know what we interrupted, but we interrupted something. Right off the bat, that was already a fairly good. All right, for our draw, we draw Brotar, so we've got a bunch of monsters right now like i said kid moto we can attack with this or we can just set it because it's got low attack we can probably just set it that's probably our best bet right now and we just pass here i probably could have just ah, I, I probably could have just wait i was hoping i would draw something better but i probably could have just waited for him to summon something off of the black stone and then bounce whatever he summoned so whether it be the red eyes uh, Toon Dragon or the Red Eyes, I could have just done that, but I didn't want this card in the graveyard because it actually does float and, and does have cool effects, so I wanted to basically get rid of it, but I mean, it's whatever. We have multiple floaters right now. We have Kid Moto into Kid Moto and then Omni Dragon Brotar, plus we have Cubic Ascension, so we have a lot of interruptions, and whatever board he makes, we have Bait Mateon, so it doesn't really matter what he makes here. He's going to go into Red Eyes, Baby Dragon, and set one card. He's going to go to Battle Phase. Okay, that's that's something. Let me double check what this does. Okay, so this card's not not terrible, actually. Just have to double check it. I think I'm going to go ahead and Cubic Ascension. I could leave Cubic Ascension for a surprise for a larger monster later. Actually, there's no point to Cubic Ascension yet. I'll, I'll, I'm good with this. I'll, I'll let this get destroyed. And then since that got destroyed, I can actually use this to summon a monster out. Or I can, yeah, I can use this to summon a monster out, or I can just Tiamaton, but I think I'm going to use the Kid Moto Dragon to special summon. And we can also use Brotar, and then we can start Link Climbing and stuff, but I don't know how much that really does for us. I mean, we have two level, two low level monsters where we can start Link Climbing, but like, where are we going to get to with what we have? I mean, I guess we can go into like Codebreaker Virus, but that's about it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Why not? So Brotar is going to special summon itself. And then Kid Moto is going to special summon itself. And then I am going to activate Brotar targeting itself so we can search a Bestial Magnemot. Because I think that will help us significantly. So I'm going to target itself. I also could have targeted his Red Eyes. I'm going to discard the Tiamaton because I'm obviously playing a lot of cards. I'm not going to... Um, not T, uh, the uh, Mateon. And then I think the card to search is Bestial Magnemot here. I think that's probably the better card to search than Tiamaton. Because Magnemot can search the Tiamaton later on. Actually, we can just put the chaining on. And before his end phase, I'm going to activate the Bestial Magnemot. Because I can activate the monster this turn, right? Yeah, I can activate the monster. There's nothing preventing me there. Now, Cubic Ascension, it's a good thing we saved. Because he's, he's playing more than likely Red Eyes. He's got a lot of cards that can be helpful. And he's going to set two more cards. I'm going to activate Bestial Magnemot on the end phase. I'm going to banish the Red Eyes stone here to summon itself and I'm going to summon it right here that way I can pop I can pop his uh, his columns no matter which one I want I can pop his columns and I'm going to resolve this effect obviously I'm going to add Tiamaton and I'm going to be able to use it next turn to pop some back row 
Actually, we can use it this turn because he just set this stuff, so I can pop it before it's even usable. That's probably the best time to use that way you can't chain it. So I'm going to summon it here because he obviously saved these because he thought they were important. Call by the Grave. I mean, that's that doesn't really help. It doesn't really, uh, it's not a super beneficial card. We have Paleo Exo Dino Miscus, which isn't a bad card at all. And then we've got a few others. Okay, so we, we don't have bad stuff here whatsoever. We can actually go into a Crusadia Avermax here, which would probably be a pretty smart play is Crusadia Avermax. Yeah, because we don't have any level fours. I think Crusadia Avermax is actually the play. We First, we go into the Code Virus, which would be using these two. One of them is going to get banished when it leaves the field. We go into this, the Code Virus, the Code Breaker Virus Swordsman. It's going to Red Eyes Fang with Chain. This is a dangerous card because he can steal Mon, uh, but... Okay, he can, yeah, they can, it can steal, mon it can make two attacks per battle phase and it can steal monsters. I'm going to hope that he doesn't steal my monsters yet, but if he does, it obviously becomes very dangerous. I'm going to try to sneak my way over to a, I'm going to, yeah, like I said, I'm going to sneak my, try to sneak my way over into a, hmm, actually, what does this do when it's co-linked? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to sneak my way over into a Crusader Avermax, because Crusader Avermax would be the best case scenario for us. Hopefully, he lets us do it and doesn't respond with either of these two. If he doesn't, we're good. He's gonna respond with it, which sucks, but I mean, listen, we, it happens, it happens. He's gonna target Reprodocus and He's going to target our other monster, Chain Link 2, which does suck. Like I said, I was hoping we'd be able to sneak over to a Crusader Avermax real quick. I mean, I guess we could have just gone to Battle Phase. only 800 attack. I think we just pass here. I mean, there's nothing much we can do. We just pass, and we have Cubic Ascension plus Paleozoic Dino Miscus, so we're not in a bad situation. We're super down in card advantage right now. Uh, but like I said, we could have gone to Battle Phase, and we would have maintained at least one monster, but it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. He, he did get rid of two Fang with Chains, so now we don't have to worry about those and Call by the Grave. Now he's going to set another card. He's going to summon out Chaos and Master, which he can summon a level 5 or higher monster with 1600 or less attack. He's going to go to Battle Phase. I'm going to... I think this would be a good time to Cubic Ascension. Protect our life points, put some Field Presence down, and uh, yeah, negate his stuff. I am going to go ahead and negate that. Not that it matters, but it's going to prevent him from attacking again. So at least he's got kind of a dead monster. And then Vidjom's all the way over here, so he can't steal it with a Fang with Chain randomly. All right, he's going to go to End Phase. We got Background Dragon, uh, which doesn't really help us right now. But if it's, if we control no cards, we can Special Summon it and a Dragon from our hand. But that's not happening right now. So I'll go ahead and just Summon out Vidjom. Put Vidjom right here. And then we're going to End Phase. All right, he's going to Normal Summon out Blackstone of Legend. This can get him to a Red Eyes. I can't afford to deal with that right now, so I'm going to go ahead and target that to banish, and I'm going to discard the card in hand. Now, that's that's good for us. Uh, the alternative is I could have also banished this, because this does float into so many different things. If it's destroyed by battle, we get to um, add that he gets to special summon a level 7, and then he gets to search twice. That's not going to do anything for us right now, so we just pass again. Now, I probably should have just attacked when I had when I had the Bistial Magnemut and the Tiamaton on board and the Code Virus. I, I probably should have attacked because I would have maintained at least one, but this card floats anyway, so it doesn't even matter if I would have attacked because then he would have gotten a really strong Red Eyes. Onto the board, he's going to link everything away into, I imagine, a Link 3. Unless he's synchro summoning. Baron de Fleur, that came out of absolutely out of nowhere. Wow, that really did come out of nowhere. I'm shocked. Okay, he's gonna be able to target and destroy our Vidjom here. Which I mean that's we we have to deal with that. And then he's gonna activate Red Eye Spirit to special summon back the baby dragon. I mean I guess we can activate Paleozoic Dinomiscus to protect our life points. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Why not? It's not like we have uh, it's not like we have plays to make later so we might as well just activate it maybe he'll negate it on the off chance he just goes yeah like waste totally wastes a negate for no reason so i mean at least that's good so he wasted his negate on a paleozoic dino miscus and then he's gonna red eye spirit to bring back the baby dragon he's gonna pop our vidjom but as long as he does damage to us we're gonna be able to summon the back the vidjom anyway so it's fine that he did that all right he's in battle phase he's gonna attack us a couple of times uh baron de fleur is gonna put us in range of using cubic ascension so we're gonna be able to use that next turn we can use it now actually but what is cool is that we can use cubic ascension attack this take 3000 damage and then we can negate it so we don't have to worry about it so i'm going to go ahead and use that and i'm going to put vidjom back on the board like i said the dream is to pull another vidjom that's like the dream for us because vidjom has been unreal that's not really helpful right now it's not an unhelpful card it's just not helpful right now you can actually use Baron de Fleur to shuffle itself back to summon something from the graveyard. 
if he wants to, but I don't think there's anything in the graveyard that's really like too good for him. So we're gonna go ahead and go to battle. And we're gonna take the damage because obviously Baron de Fleur is a little too good. Because it's gonna be able to pop every single turn. Then we'll put the Baron de Fleur back here. I mean the Vigion back here. Then we're gonna go to main phase two. And we're gonna put the Vigion back out onto the board. We also could have waited and uh, summoned background dragon, which is this one right here. We should have summoned this. Should have waited to use the cube extension on our turn and then use background dragon to special summon itself and then small world it into uh, a level four dragon. And then we could have gone into something that would have done something more than what we're doing now, but it, it's whatever. We already made the mistake. We gotta move forward. All right, so our opponent's gonna activate the Baron de Fleur to put itself back, but it doesn't do anything right now because, I mean, it's negated, so he can't attack and it's negated. Vigiam is permanent. Can't be, can't attack, can't be negated forever, even if Vigiam leaves the field. This card is really good. Next turn, I think we're gonna go, he's summoning out Gear Freed. It sucks, but I was gonna say we can go Ray Turbo next turn, but I guess we'll have to see what he does. Gear Freed, hopefully attacks with Gear Freed. That would be like a best case scenario if he attacks with Gear Freed. He's gonna make a Link 3 into Triple Burst Dragon, which when a Spell Trap or Monster Effect is activated, negate the activation and that's in the he does piercing well rest in peace yeah that sucks uh yeah we lost that one we lost that one fair and square that was that was that was that was my fault uh we did lose that one all right we just lost the coin flip our hand is not looking too bad we've got banquet of millions cup of ace dark world dealings Madeon, and vidjom it's definitely not a bad hand whatsoever we've definitely got a couple of plays here that are available to us We've got multiple draw cards, which is nice, depending on if we want a coin flip, but then we've got the rest of what's going on here. Our opponent's going to normal summon, or special summon, a Kashtira Ogre, and then search the trap card. We do have Mateon for going second, which is cool. I don't know how useful it's going to be, depending on what he has. Alright, our opponent is actually playing Kashtiras with, Bis with, with um, Despia. Because he opened, he, oh, and he opened pretty nuts too. He opened Brandon and High Spirits, Bistia Lubelion, Kashtira Ogre, and Jester of the Aluber, which is Aluber of uh, the Jester of Despia. He opened pretty crazy because now he's into the branded stuff. He's, he's, he's doing his thing and he just fused from the field and from his hand, which I guess he drew the bricks. I don't know. And then he's going to go into Searing Lubelion. Definitely not the best route here, but. I, I, it's it's one way to do it and then also he pulled which is kind of crazy it's kind of shocking he pulled uh we i i this is something that is kind of in the background we actually pulled brand diffusion brand diffusion is limited to one we have brand diffusion which is kind of crazy to even think about we have this card we just don't have any targets whatsoever like we can't summon anything from it uh we don't have like the albion we don't have the lubelion we don't have any of that stuff if we did it'd be crazy because like i said we we don't have the, the fusion monster either we don't have the uh, fallen of albaz either we don't have him but we have that card in the back they have one of the best cards in the entire game brand of fusion but nothing to do with it and he's going to set one card his board is not by any means super menacing like his board is actually kind of not even really that great uh but it just depends on what happens next i guess we're going to activate cup of ace Actually, no, we're not going to activate a couple of ways. Uh, he set a card. He added back the branded fusion with the retribution, right? He added that back. So I'm going to activate Dark World Dealings to possibly force him to discard that first. So we'll, we'll do that first. So we'll see what he discards here. If he's got an Ash, he can just Ash this and then not have to worry about it. We're going to Crackdown's pretty good. Crackdown's pretty good. Uh, Banquet of Millions will buy us a turn, but I don't really know how much that really buys us against him. I don't really know what that really does. We've got Vissa Starfrost, and then we've got... Which, again, I don't know how much Vissa Starfrost really does against this board. I mean, he's got every monster here is stronger than Vissa Starfrost. So I think we actually get rid of the Vissa Starfrost. And like I said, everything here is stronger than Vissa Starfrost. All right, they're going to discard the Rhino Heart. We're going to activate Cup of Ace. We have to, I mean, we we have to be big rollers. We hope for heads, right? We hope for heads. Heads or tails. Let's see. Heads, tails. Our opponent draws two cards. 
obviously not an ideal situation but i mean that's the best literally it's the best draw card we've pulled uh so we're gonna go ahead and uh Medion try to go to battle phase now they're gonna go ahead and uh use mirror jade on us we're gonna lose the Medion and we're gonna set crackdown and banquet of millions and hope that that's enough uh because i mean we hope that that's enough all right now he's got the Kashtira engine which i mean we gave him he's gonna use the Kashtira engine he's gone plus two for no reason off of our card so we went minus one now he's got the Kashtira fenrir honestly i think this duel is pretty wrapped up that 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 card sealed our fate basically uh it was really the the mirror jade really ended it for us but really ended it for us was cup of ace giving him the cards all right we just lost a coin flip our hand is not looking too great but i mean i guess we'll have to see what happens here we've got background dragon vijam twister forbidden chalice and ledger book it depends on what he's playing i mean he set a monster that's good to see i guess so i guess we'll have to see what he accomplishes here he has the snake eye thing which is scary because it's snake eye but overall, he set one monster, so I guess it's not the end of the world here. The only thing is we don't have a monster we can really normal summon right now, because this is uh, a level 5 monster. We've cracked down. So, based on what I'm seeing here, I think we just set Vigiam and some spawn trap cards and we pass. That's literally our best bet here. We can't afford to not set everything because our deck just doesn't... Um, it's, it's an all or nothing deck. We have to put everything in or nothing in. So, so far out of this deck, three things that I don't like are the background dragon and the, and the dark world dealings. I just, I'm not feeling the dark world dealings because it actually has helped our opponent more than it's helped us thus far. And then, like I said, this background dragon is when you open it, it just really does nothing unless you have a way to discard it, which I guess dark world dealings would be it. Uh, but even if you do see it, it's like kind of, it just summons two monsters. Uh, he's going to normal summon this, which is going to help him excavate at the end phase. Which I'm, I'm, for now, I'm fine with that. He can, he can do that. That's during the end phase. He's going to go to battle phase, and I'm going to probably just negate his monster with Vijam whenever the two of them do battle. So he's going to do that effect. Well, not an effect. He's going to do that, and we're just going to use Vijam to put this in the back row. And now this is negated, so he no longer ha gets to use that effect. Now, one. One thing I will say is sometimes, you know, I'm only dueling a limited amount of duels here, and there's a lot of cards that I don't see, but like, for example, ba Background Dragon, I've seen multiple times now, uh, Dark World Dealings, like there's certain cards that I see a ton, and there's certain cards that I never see whatsoever, so it's kind of tough to judge the deck if we just keep seeing the same cards over and over, like when I was dueling with this deck in solo mode, and I was like playing with it, and I was practicing it, I was seeing Tiamaton, and uh, I was seeing Tiamaton a ton, and I was seeing... Uh, the trap card, the the Dragon Maid tidying with Tiamaton, and I was seeing it with like uh, the Bestial Magnum, and I was seeing really really cool combos. But it, it seems like it, it's it's not quite. I'm not seeing the same stuff in the games that I do in the in the solo mode. I always get crazy hands in the solo mode. I'm like this deck is fantastic, and then I get into the game, and it's like you know background dragon Vijam and and back row, and our opponent's doing nothing. Uh, we got Guard Dragon Cataclysm, which is a good card, but we just can't use it right now. Um, we don't, we haven't drawn any of the the dragons yet, so we're just gonna we're just gonna summon out the Vijam, and we're going to yeah, we're just gonna summon that out, and that should be good enough. It protects our life points. I mean, I guess we can technically tribute summon the Vijam, but he's kind of protecting our life points here, so we can tribute summon him an attack, and then we have Cataclysm like live. I mean, I guess that's actually the better play because like why are we we protecting our life points from what a Karibo? So we're going to go ahead and summon the background dragon and we're just going to go to battle phase. And we're going to attack over the curry bandit. And then we then we can actually like have more a more threatening board cuz like I said like Vijam is good but like he's not doing anything in the in the current situation so we might as well just uh tribute him for, for the meantime. Vijam is like uh like Yuki has Karibo, we have Vijam. He's like our Karibo. He's like he's our, our ace card that appears out of nowhere with his his double eyes. I don't even know what this card is. It's like what is it, like a little demon with like wings and then it's got like a middle finger that leads to an eyeball. It's such an odd looking card, but it's saved us so many times. It's like our very own Karibo. It's kind of crazy. Oh, our opponent's scooping. Look at that. Background Dragon and Vijam were just too much for him. So I'll take the win. I'll take it. I'll definitely take that win. And then we've got a legacy ticket 
out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. They were playing like a an anime deck. Looks pretty fun to me, honestly. It's got like a Winged Dragon of Raw. It's got all of the anime cards, Exodia. Uh, it's like Yugi's Grandpa's deck. And actually more than that, because now it's got Uriah. And this guy's like, I, yeah, I watched the show. You just let me, let me, everything I, I remember from the show, I'm going to throw in one big pile. All right, let's open this Master Pack from that win just now. Let's see if we can get anything too crazy here. Uh, let's see, no hollows that it shows. Okay, so everything's going to open itself and it's not good. Uh, we've got Lear Lusk, which we've already have. We have this card. Uh, this is new, but it doesn't really help us. It has a bunch of harpy effects or harpy adjacent effects. We've got an, a Yosenju Scrap Factory, which I think all scrap monsters gain attack is irrelevant. Uh, another, Caribou, which is the uh, Brotherhood of the Fire Fist card, Hymn of Light, and Scrap Fist. Not great pulls whatsoever. All right, so for our singular legacy ticket, let's see what we get out of this. Uh, legacy tickets, like I said, have been pretty good to us, so we'll see what we get out of these. Uh, we've got Barox, one of my favorite cards of all time. Look at that. Look at that stat line. 1380, 1530. I wish I could use this card, but we need to pull Ready Fusion. Then we got Setex, Sextex Summon. Okay. Okay, so we get the special Banish from our Hand Graveyard face up on the field. Six monsters, one each. Ritual Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, Pendulum, and Link. All of those. Then we summon a monster with the same type as the monster so in theory if we banish five pyros or i guess six pyros from a bunch of different areas we can summon a monster i mean this is a little bit too complicated i don't think we're ever going to be the, the one the thing that really throws it off is the ritual part like everything else maybe in our pendulum deck we'd actually be able to pull this off right because we have fusions we have synchros we have x seeds pendulum and link we have all that but then that ritual just kind of throws everything off uh Interesting car, but not going to be really usable. And Barox, unfortunately, is not usable until we pull Ready Fusion. All right, we just lost a coin flip, but our opponent chose for us to go first, which is nice. I appreciate that. So we have Barrier Statue, Sword of Concealing Light, Anti-Spell, and Forbidden Chalice. We're going to set the Forbidden Chalice, which we're actually not even going to be able to activate because we're going to activate Anti-Spell Fragrance anyway, but... Uh, we're going to go to end phase here, and we're going to activate Anti-Spell Fragrance as soon as possible. I don't know if our opponent is playing Blue Eyes, but if they are playing Blue Eyes, uh, outside of the Lord of D monster, they don't have any normal summons that actually... Yeah, they don't have any normal summons that actually stop the barrier step. Oh, they're going to have Twin Twister immediately. So, I mean, that's good. They have the uh, White Stone of Legend, which allows them to get to the Blue Eyes. Like I said, as long as they don't get to, as long as they don't get to the Lord of D monster, they pretty much can't out our monster anyway. We're not going to activate, obviously, the the Forbidden Chalice because we'd negate our barrier statue. It'd be pointless. He's going to add the Blue Eyes White Dragon to his hand off of the stone. Uh, he's going to add the Royal Rare, the new one, really cool looking. Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't even know if... Can you even get this common one? I just realized common one popped up. Can you? How do you acquire the common one? I don't think you can. So he's going to add that. He's going to summon Maiden, which actually under the barrier statue does nothing <laughs> because it, it does nothing. You have to summon a blue eyes. I get, not, yeah, it does nothing under the barrier statue. He just summoned a thousand damage, essentially. Poof! Look who's here. All right, we're going to activate the Fissure dimensional fissure because i want his maiden to get banished why not add insult to injury is there a point to normal summon this i don't think there's a point to summon this uh, no there's no point to summon this so we're going to go to battle phase and now we're just going to attack that and when that hits the graveyard well you can activate this but it doesn't matter because it can't you can't special summon anything he can negate the attack but he can't special summon I should have actually, I just realized I should have summoned the Kid Mono Dragon. Um, yeah, end phase here. I should have summoned it because I, re I didn't realize he could negate if he uh, couldn't special summon a Blue Eyes, which kind of sucks for us. But, I mean, again, he has to be able to do something here. He's going to switch the Maiden back into attack mode, go to end phase. Again, that's fine because now, this time around, I'm actually going to summon the Kid Mono Dragon. Oof, that's a great card to draw with the Kid Mono Dragon. So now we're going to summon out the Kid Mono Dragon. We're going to go to battle phase. This deck is, is popping off right now, I'm not going to lie. This deck is doing its thing right now. We're going to attack with Kid Moto. He's going to negate the attack more than likely. Switch it to defense position, which is fine. And then we're going to be able to use the barrier statue. Obviously, he can't summon the blue eyes. We're going to attack with the barrier statue. And his monster is not going to go to the graveyard. It's going to get banished. And then we're going to set the Cataclysm. And we're going to pass here. That's, that's pretty solid. 
Uh, as long as he doesn't open Twin Twisters, I'm happy. Uh, obviously, Twin Twisters would be bad because he has... Yeah, he could out our incredible back row right now. He's going to normal summon Sage. Which is fine with me. Sage is completely fine because it's going to let him search. He can search for Effect Failure if he wants to. If he's playing the trap cards, he can out what's going on on our board right now. He can get around, uh, he can summon out Blue Eyes White Dragon. So he would have to search Valor and then set True Light and then essentially, yeah, set Valor, set True Light and pop. No, he's not going to do that. But he could have he could have Valored our Barrier Statue during our turn and activate True Light to special summon Blue Eyes White Dragon. And then he'd have a 3000 attack monster that outs what's on the board right now. And he's going to go to end phase on this. He shouldn't have uh, done that, but he should have searched, like I said, Valor. But maybe he's not playing Valor. And we got memory loss. That's pretty good. Yeah, we just go to battle phase again. We just go to battle phase. Uh, we're going to attack with the barrier statue. And we're going to attack with the kid Moto dragon. And then we're gonna, just going to set the memory loss and pass on that. We're going to set memory loss and pass. Like I said... This is pretty good. Dimensional Fissure and Barrier Statue against Blue Eyes. I mean, that is pretty good. As long as he doesn't draw Lord of D, we're in really, really good shape right now. But like I said, Lord of D can can screw everything up for us. Not Lord of D, whatever the new Lord of D monster is. It's going to set one card. I don't know what that is, but that could be the, the trap card that makes Blue Eyes unaffected, or that could be True Light. Either one is not good for us. This is probably a stone. If it could be Sage too, which has 1500 defense. Either one is whatever. I mean, but this is actually a little bit of an issue because True Light. I mean, I don't want to say True Light is too big of an issue because we do have the Cataclysm. I could pop this on the end phase, but I don't want to pop things until I know what they are because I don't want to have to waste things. Uh, more than likely, this is a stone because that's what he searched, but I guess we'll see. Blue Eyes is usually Brick City, so more than likely it's a stone. Stones have 200 defense, so we can't get over with Kid Moto. We're going to attack. Oh, no, that stone is 500. The little stone. The other stone has... The other stone has uh, more or less attack. It's 250 because it mirrors blue eye stats. We're going to set Crackdown and just pass here. That's all we've got to do. And then, like I said, Kid Moto's cool. I'd say my biggest gripe with him is that he's a little bit on the, on the weak side stat-wise. But his effect is pretty good. Because he does summon any dragon from your hand. So I guess he's, he's kind of good. It's, this, this deck is interesting. Uh, it's like a dragon engine. There's a few things I would definitely change about this deck, but not like a lot. This is actually, a, I think it's a fairly made, good, like a fairly well-made deck. We haven't even drawn into this. So Bird of Sovereignty. I, I would definitely take out the Dark World Dealings if I can. Although Dark World Dealings does trigger Kidmoto, but the danger with Dark World Dealings is it actually helps our opponent a lot of the time. And then I would take out maybe like this and just a few other cards. But overall, I don't think this is a bad deck at all. Maybe put in some stronger monsters. Like, the interruptions are nice, but like, as you can see right now, we're just not drawing monsters. And it's going to get to the point where our opponent's going to see Harpy's Feather Duster or something. And then we're not going to be able to do anything. It's another stone, which they're not going to be able to use, which is awesome. And we're going to attack directly. The only thing, like I said, we're not doing a ton of damage right now at all. And we don't have a lot of level fours. So, I guess we just pass on this and end phase... Yeah, we need to see something. There's a few cards I would take out, but overall, I'm I'm, I'm actually kind of uh, impressed by how 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 this deck performs. He's gonna set another card, and he's gonna go to end phase. All right, we need to see a monster of some kind. Bistial Magnemut is not a bad monster, but just not really. Actually, I contribute this. And just summon Bistial Magnemut. The only thing is, Ma uh, Magnemut only activates its effect when it's special summoned. Um, which I can't do right now. Actually, this is book all monsters, destroy. Oh, your opponent controls. If it booked all monsters, we could book our own barrier statue, but we can't. Um, I, I kind of want to save this for blue eyes stuff later if he pops our back row. But, yeah, I kind of want to save this just in case he starts going off with blue eyes, but I kind of need to strike now. So I'm going to go ahead and Tribute Summon. Because, like I said, it, it, I could probably save it for later. But right now, I think it's just a little bit better uh, to do some damage. Because apply some pressure. And then we still have our uh, Guard Dragon Cataclysm live if we need it. And we still have 
you know, it's, it, we're essentially in the same board state that we were in a second ago, but just slightly better because we have a monster that is 2,500 attack instead of 200. So now, it just, again, it just depends on if he draws back or removal right now. If he doesn't, then we essentially win this duel. He doesn't seem to have because he's setting cards. And he's going to go to end phase, which is fine with me. And we're going to draw Tiamaton, which is not really usable right now because I can't special summon. But we're going to just go to battle phase, attack with Bistial Magnemut and Barrier Statue. He's going to activate True Light, which doesn't really matter because you can't special summon with... Yeah, you can't special summon right now anyway because obviously it's not... And there's no Blue Eyes Fire Monster. But that is cool that he has the Royal Rare of this really nice looking card. And he's going to set the Vision, which doesn't really help right now. I'm going to get that attack in, and then we're going to attack the with the Barrier Statue. We should, we, this should be the end of this duel. Yep, there we go. We just won another one. All right, so we just won that duel, and we've got one Legacy Tick. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent's playing. They're playing a Blue Eyes deck. They've got, uh, you know, pretty standard, like almost like a Structure Deck Blue Eyes deck. A lot of cards I would definitely cut if I could. Uh, definitely should be playing Effect Veiler. Might as well buy a bundle. Get Effect Veiler in there. Some other small changes. But overall, not the worst deck in the world. Alright, so let's open a Master Pack. Hope to get something. Again, there's no Hollow in this one either. We had a long string of Hollows, so it's fine if we don't get any Hollows. Because we, we had so many. Uh, we've got an Usarctic card, which is actually one of the best Usarctic cards that exists. It's actually the best Usarctic card. So I'm, I'm shocked it's only a rare, but Usarctic's not really that great. We've got a second Vice Dragon. That's pretty cool. That's uh, a free level 5 special summon. Star... Starring Starling. All right, so depending on where you summon this, you can change its levels, increasing it uh, by four or three or two or one. So you can basically it adjust its levels, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's not a terrible card. I mean, I guess it, it's kind of like our what's his name? What's that dude's name? The uh, uh, the Gaga -ga that can adjust his level and match whatever needs to be matched, so it's not bad. Crystal Beacon's a Crystal Beast card. Eldorado's not a great card for us. Dodo -do -do Driver. Uh, yeah, we can... Uh, actually, I think we have that card that if we have a Dodo, -do -do, we can special summon it. So we might be able to play that, plus it's a warrior. So that might go in our warrior pile deck. And then we've got Salamangre Great Beat Bison, which is actually not a terrible card in... Like a sealed format because you can special summon it if you have three salamangre monsters so it's not actually that bad of a card like i said in this particular format and then we've also got tg tg trident launcher which is uh requires tg monsters which is, this card is not bad but it requires a tg specific card we did pull some tgs and we have that giant tg monster i think the one that's a level 10 and this can unlink summon special summon three tg monsters from your deck, but then we'd, we'd need to play a bunch of TG stuff to make this usable. So I don't know if this is really too great for us. It's it's link columns aren't bad, but it's a lot to... We have to include a lot of TG to actually be able to play that card. So again, I don't think any of these cards are really usable, except for maybe Vice Dragon is usable. Uh, but other than that, Dodo, -do, I got to double check. But like for the most part, I don't think any of these are really usable. All right, let's open this Legacy ticket. Let's see what we get out of this one. Hopefully we get something something interesting out of it. Uh, we've got an X uh, Center Frog and a XY Dragon Cannon. Uh, this frog, unfortunately, is one of the worst frogs that there is. Uh, and it, it's actually one of the newest frogs. That's crazy. This is one of the newest frogs that have ever come out, and it's not really that great. And then we've got the XY Dragon Cannon, which is uh, unsummonable as of right now for us. All right, so to do a quick review here on uh, the Trickster's deck. Uh, basically, I, I overall, I found the deck to be actually quite nice. Um... Uh, we never drew it in 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 game, but Dragon Maid Tiding with Bestial Magnemod and like Phantasme and uh, Tiamaton are actually a really really cool combo. Like I said, when I was playing in uh, the story mode, it was like it was doing really really well for me. I was like shocked at how good it was doing. I would like activate Bounce and then activate it again and then search Tiamaton and add him and pop him. Like it was it was a really nice loop that I could do. Um, now, the only problem with this deck, a few changes that I would make, I'd probably add um, the level 8 Synchro, uh, cut some random card here. This deck doesn't go into the extra deck as much as our other extra deck. The other thing that I would change is I would probably cut the Dealings and try to drop this card deck to level four, to 40, 40 cards flat. Just because Dealings, 
it, it gives our opponent cards and then it just puts us in a bad situation because it's technically it's a minus one and it gives our opponent cards so i'd probably cut this and maybe the background dragon but i understand why he's playing background dragon and dealings if you cut dealings you have to cut background dragon because essentially background dragon just activate dealings uh discard the background dragon and then you can special summon a dragon from your uh, if this goes in the grave you can special summon this and a dragon from your hand so it's not like a bad combo it's just you need to you kind of mess with the engine if you cut any one of these cards but those would be the three cards that i'm uh, i'd probably be kind of leaning towards cutting and then kid moto is pretty cool too um but sometimes he can uh slow you down a little bit but overall i actually really really enjoyed um this deck all right this is the last deck that we're going to play it's by dual links anti-meta 7636 uh this is a psychic deck so he's got a few psychic cards that are going to be usable in the deck so it's a few psychic cards and then he's got the new time lord that we pulled uh zaphion and then other just kind of psychic support like psychokinesis and uh, psi station for example so we're going to give this deck a try i again i try to uh keep it the exact same way that he made it so we're gonna go ahead and try this deck all right so we just opted to go first our hand's not looking too bad uh we've got adversary and we've got memory of an yeah member of an adversary and dinomiscus uh this card's not bad because it essentially prevents anything from being activated but obviously we don't know what he has yet so there's no point to really do that i think i'm just going to set these two in pass we drew a really going second hand this time around uh which kind of sucks for us our opponent's going to activate nadir servant i have nothing that i can really do about that right now He's going to send the Tiss to pop a random card, so we're losing Memory of an Adversary or Dinomiscus here. We're getting rid of something. He's going to add Dogmatica Maxim, and he's going to pop a random card that we have. He's going to pop the Dinomiscus, unfortunately. But we have Memory of an Adversary still. He's going to activate Summon the Dogmatica Maximus. Uh, we don't really have any cards that really float in our extra deck right now, so... Unfortunately, does this float if it's sent from Field to Graveyard? So no, it doesn't float. It, at least as of you know it doesn't float for this i'm probably going to get rid of the invalid golem and uh, probably this level seven just because we're unlikely to summon those two so i'll just send those two and hopefully we get something good he's going to use garura to draw a card and the tis to pop another card so we're going to lose our memories of an adversary so we essentially clear the board here now he's going to activate the branded regained and dogmatica matrix uh, he probably just drew into this so he didn't activate it earlier and then he's gonna albazoa he's gonna be able to summon that card out which albazoa is pretty good but we have the out too because we have this if we control a psychic so all we have to do is just summon this and we have the out he summoned this in defense even though we didn't have anything so we should just summon it in attack mode honestly but albazoa is 4000 and he can send a card from our extra deck i don't even know why he's bothering to do that because our extra deck is non-existing he's gonna send crooked cook which i mean i guess that's a, that is technically the smartest one send more cards from our extra deck again this doesn't really matter because we have to send six but i mean i guess i'll send i mean i guess we'll send the morrow geist we'll send the castle uh yeah he has the out to the castle anyway we'll send this wolf thing this and i guess diamond dyer no we'll send this to the graveyard that should be good so we'll send those to the graveyard and we one more so we'll send yeah we'll send the diamond diamond dyer to the graveyard so we just send those cards to the graveyard it's see the bestial magnemot so now he's at what is that 6500 damage should have just banish one of our cards honestly i don't know why he didn't i guess he can use the brand to put his monster back so he can draw another card here and then he can use the dogmatica again uh yeah the dogmatica cards to send the natis and then pop another card later if he wants to and drew swarm is going to wrap it up because obviously that's that's more than enough damage on board uh to end this game all right we just won the coin flip here our hand is looking pretty good honestly we've got uh goblinberg the shocker dude and then we've got this card select one psychic card in your graveyard special summon it treated as a tuner when this card's removed destroy that monster it's essentially like monster reborn for or i guess they like call the haunted um 
Yeah, it's like Call of the Haunted for psychic monsters, which I didn't even know I had. Uh, we're going to normal summon Goblinburg, and we're going to try to summon out the Shocker. Because I think the best move here is to go into Time Thief Redoer. And then Time Thief Redoer is also a psychic, which is, I guess, pretty good to get for us. Uh, yeah, it's also a psychic. So we're going to summon that out right there in the middle. And then we're going to summon out the... Uh, we're going to set the Cubic Ascension and the Tuning, the Psychic Tuning. He's going to activate Dogmatica Maximus. I mean, that's that's fine to us. I mean, I, I don't I don't see an issue with it. He's going to summon that out. He can't negate anything because he didn't control the Dogmatica monster. So that's fine. And then we're going to set these two, and we're just going to pass on this, and we're just going to end the turn. This is a pretty cool card, too. Uh, would it be good for us to pull is the question. I don't, I don't even know if this would be that great. I mean, it's a free 2,500 Special Summon. I guess maybe it would be decent in our uh, chaos deck, but like other than that, I don't I don't know that this 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 card is too great for us personally. But in and obviously in Dogmatica, this card's very good because it's a negate and it's a free special summon and it gains attack when it attacks. It's like really really good. He's gonna activate the effect of Soul Successor on us, which is a good card. I'm gonna ha I have no choice. I have to use Time Thief Redoer. Uh, again, Soul Successor because, I mean, what choice do I really have here? Otherwise, we're just going to lose our monster for free. We're going to detach, and we're going to uh, get nothing, and then he's going to get nothing. So neither of us are going to get anything, but he's going to give up some cards. On card advantage, we're not in the worst shape right now, but yeah, this is really good. If he's setting already, that's good. He chose for us to go second, so I imagine he's probably playing... He's probably playing... I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, summon back that other monster too. I'm going to use tuning, psychic tuning to special summon back the this card too. Because he'll actually protect our Time Thief Redoer if we need him to. We're going to draw, we're going to draw Arborea, which is actually pretty good. This, unfortunately, it turned this card into a tuner now, which means Arborea is not going to uh, be able to turn into a level 7 because it turned this monster into a tuner. Mad Random, he's going to Ring of Destruction. We actually, like I said, we have the protection. He's going to target that, but I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to use Shocker to protect our monster, and he's going to Humanoid Slime. This is odd stuff here. I guess we can't? If a Psychic Monster on the field would be destroyed... Oh, I guess it happens on Resolution, yeah. So we can pay 500 and destroy this monster instead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and keep Time Thief Redoer and destroy this monster instead. We're going to take some additional damage, too. Uh, we've got a monster underneath. We're going to take some additional damage here, which is fine. But, I mean, what choice did we really have there? And then we can turn off this chaining so it stops bothering us so much. Um, now, here we can summon Arborea. But Arborea is not really going to do much. But I guess it's going to defend our life points just in case our opponent gets past the Time Thief. So I guess we could do that. And then we're going to pass on this one. And then now, standby phase, we're going to be able to take a monster or card off the top of their deck. And then we have also the Cubic Ascension, which is good. This card is, again, uh, pretty good. The card we're dying to pull is the God Slime. God Slime would be, like, a huge deal for us. We're going to get a spell. That's pretty good. So we have a monster and a spell. I'm happy with that. Our opponent is playing some nonsense. This is the kind of stuff you want to see because it makes for really fun duels um, when they're not playing just straight up, you know, generic meta decks. But he's going to go into what I thought God Slime. Again, one of our dream pulls is God Slime. Uh, hopefully one day we do pull this because it's just it turns a 3,000 defense monster into a 3,000 attack monster out of the blue uh, Which can be really good for us and then right now Axis I hope he loads this dude up because we have Vigom I hope he just I, I hope he puts even more cards onto this guy onto this guy So he's gonna attack us. I'm gonna go ahead and activate cubic ascension it'll redirect to this monster and since it redirects it, we can activate it, and then we're going to negate this effect so we can attack whatever we want. And yeah, that's pretty good for us. And next turn, we have Arborea to do stuff. We have a lot of stuff. And then Axe of Despair uh, is just kind of there. So now, end phase, we're going to activate Time Thief since he set everything. I'm just going to draw a card. I'm not going to use the other effect. Might as well just draw. And Crackdown's pretty good. We can take this thing, but I mean, it couldn't attack anyway. Sword of Concealing is not going to help us right now. Uh, we're going to activate Time Thief. Hopefully we get another spell. 
because that'll allow us to do... We get a trap. That's not bad either, honestly. I think we can start doing some direct attacks now. I think that would be smart. Yeah, some direct attacks wouldn't be too bad. I don't know what he has face down, but... I don't think attacking would be too bad here. So we're going to go to battle phase. We're going to attack this here first. Yeah, we're going to attack this. It's set. He should have summoned that. Then we're going to activate the effect of Time Thief Redoer in order to detach a trap and uh, not a monster. And then we're going to put this back on the top of his... Actually... Mm, yeah, I think I have to put this on the top of his deck. Because if I put Axe of Despair on the top of his deck, it'd be really cool too. Because then he'd be stuck drawing it. And then we can attack again. But I can't out this monster right now. So I'm going to go ahead and Egyptian God Slime. I'm going to put that on the top of his deck. And now I'm going to attack directly. And just in case he has Raigeki or something, I'm going to leave Vigion back here. So I'm going to set the Crackdown. And I'm going to pass on this. Nothing else left to do. I, alternatively, I could have special summoned Vijam and then tributed the, into Madeon and then uh, shuffled his monsters back into his hand and stuff, but I don't think that would be too good uh, because then he would just have the monsters. Uh, he'd have the Maiden in hand right now, so we're going to activate Time Thief to put a monster underneath our Redoer or a card underneath our Redoer. And then we have Crackdown, which is pretty cool. He's going to activate, no way, the Rampage with... Uh, with Eyes of Blue, which is going to banish absolutely everything else. And it's going to summon three Blue Eyes White Dragons, which I am completely fine with. Banish his entire graveyard, banish everything else he has. He's going to be able to summon three Blue Eyes White Dragons, and we're going to have to fend off those three Blue Eyes White Dragons with a Time Thief Arborea Crackdown. I should have summoned the Vijam out, but I mean, we're going to live with our decisions now. Uh, but this is fine because we have Crackdown to take one of the Blue Eyes. So at the... And then we're still getting a card off the top of his deck, which I don't know what we're going to get, but we're going to get something. And he just took three monsters and put them on board, so we're even less likely to get a monster. Uh, so we're going to get a monster. Um, it's going to be a Winged Dragon of Raw. And I guess he can all, really, all he can really do is just go to battle phase here. There's not much that he can do. He's going to declare an attack on this. I'm going to go ahead and use the Time Thief Redoer to banish itself because it's too good it puts blue eyes back it helps us out the blue eyes when he has them next turn so i'm going to take some damage here but not all of the damage i'm going to let him attack this arborea because that does really nothing anyway uh, right now and then he's going to try to attack but thankfully he has no other interruptions and we know that and we has crackdown so we're going to crack down take his blue eyes so he can attack the blue eyes if he wants to but then he has to out his own blue eyes and he's stuck on a single blue eyes so again i'm pretty much cool with that yeah i'm pretty much cool with that so he outed his own blue eyes now he's stuck on one blue eyes and i'm not unhappy about that i'm, I'm perfectly content with that he's going to use a samsara dragon he's going to add a level five or higher dragon so the blue eyes back to his hand that's not doing much unless he draws alternative so i'm fine with that and then i think that's yeah that's it that's it for his turn time thief returns hopefully we get something excellent off of this a trap card would be nice uh, off the top of his deck, but then again, so would a spell. I don't really care what I get, and, uh, we've got a ritual monster. We got a, that, I mean, that's, I'm fairly happy we got that. Dimension Prison, I'm just gonna set. I think I'm gonna still leave this in the back row, because he has blue eyes, and I don't know what he's drawing, but he's got blue eyes. But I don't, and now that I know he has Chaos Max, I don't want him just, like, Chaos Max attack Vijom, so... I'm probably just going to end on this. And this actually outs Chaos Max. Swords of Concealing Light actually does out Chaos Max. But this way we have things spread out a little bit. And then we've got the Dimensional Prison just in case he attacks. I'm going to use the Redoer in order to get a card. We get a monster. Again, oof, that's not the kind of monster you want to get. But this doesn't actually do anything um, unless it's sent from... Actually, is this... I think this is sent from anywhere. He's going to summon Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, a monster with 1,900 or more. Can't be destroyed by battle by a monster with 1,900 or more attacks. So, essentially, it's going to be there. He's going to attack with Blue Eyes. I'm going to go ahead and Dimensional Prison. And I'm going to banish that Blue Eyes, White Dragon. And, but yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, we can Swords of Concealing Light to get rid of this if we need to. But like I said, I, I'm saving the Swords of Concealing Light just in case he draws a way to get to... Chaos Max Dragon, because Chaos Max Dragon will absolutely demolish us, and we don't have an out to that. Actually, we have two outs in our hand to Chaos Max Dragon, funny enough. Uh, 
Yeah, we're gonna time thief for sure. We're gonna time thief for sure. We're gonna get a Dogmatica Knighted. Uh, we can set this and then summon out Vijam and then special summon the Iron Dragon, but Iron Dragon doesn't out the situation either. So Iron Dragon doesn't do anything. He has blue eyes in hand. He has blue eyes in hand. I mean, he's... Advanced Ritual Art's not happening anytime soon. He's got blue eyes in hand. We can technically get rid of this Obnoxious Celtic Guardian if we make a Link 2. I mean, I, 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 might, I might as well do damage than not do damage, right? To set this, I'm going to activate this. To place this monster right here. And then we can summon out the Tiamaton. Summon out Tiamaton. Like I said, we can go into... Uh, we just keep going for damage right now. Or we can go into a Link play. Like Brute Enforcer. And Brute Enforcer can out this, technically. Or we can go for damage. Like I said, we can... Like, is this monster really doing anything in synergy as with the rest of his deck? Like, he has such an odd deck. I don't think it really synergizes with the rest of the deck. So I think we just battle phase and just do damage to him. And then next turn, if he, uh, for whatever reason, it's like switches this monster to defense mode, which is fine with me, then we then we do what we have to do. But right now, I think we just do some damage and go to main phase. And that's it. We just pass on that. I don't think I'm going to go into Brute Enforcer because this defends our life points. This defends our life points. These are all kind of good, so as long as he doesn't draw a way to get get to Chaos Max, we're good. Oh, he scooped on that. All right, that's good enough for me. Uh, clean win. Okay, I, I wish I could play just more of like those people. Like, not not. It's not about winning or losing. It's about just those are those are interesting decks to play against because they're you know they're they're playing something that it's not that we can win against, but they're, they're playing something that's not like a, like a, a tier one deck with a bunch of recursion. All right, so this is what we got. We got a legacy ticket, and then we got two cards. We've got Gravedigger Ghoul again, and then we've got the uh, Corroding Shark, which is a pretty cool-looking card, but stat-wise, it's a zombie. It's dark. I don't know if that really works for us. Out of curiosity, this is what our opponent was playing. He's playing an interesting anime deck, I'll say that. There's a lot going on in this one. It's like Blue Eyes, Self Decay. If we had activated this, I just thought it was a Self Decay deck, but no, he's got a lot going on in this deck. Uh, depending on the combination of cards you drew, he could have really beat us here. All right, let's open this Master Pack. Uh, again, it's not Shining, but like I said, I need so many good rares that I don't really care if it's Shining or not. Uh, another Ledger Book, that's pretty good. That card's been helpful to us. A Hero, Hero Bear is a Hero card. Uh, Dark Contract we already have and haven't been using. Keel, I don't think it's usable. Um, target a level 3 Dragon, equip it to this. I mean, I don't see how that really helps. Uh, we've got, this is a Sanctuary in the Sky card, and we already have it. We're pulling a lot of repeats today. Mech Lord, Astro, another repeat, and then we've got Insector Ladybug. So we got a repeat, a repeat, a repeat, and a repeat. We've got four repeats again. Kind of crazy. Well, let's open this Master Pack. We've got one singular Master Pack to open here. Let's see what we get. We've got Roaring Ocean Snake, which we already have, and Twister, which we'll... today's like repeat day. We just keep pulling cards we already have. It's kind of crazy. All right, we just won the coin flip here. Our hand is... I mean, that's pretty good. Um... Uh, Mech Knight, Indigo, we've got Messenger of Peace, Psy Station, and Small World. Psy Station's another card I'm a little iffy about. When you summon a Psychic, pay 500 life points, increase its attack. It's level by 1, it's attack by 300. A little iffy on that one. Small World, I mean, I guess we can Small World. I don't, I don't remember if this person wanted Dragoodies still in this deck or not. I don't think they did. I would have Small Worlded. Oh no, Dragoodies is there, so I guess we could Small World into Dragoodies. Uh, using the the Mech Knight. I think that is the play. But then again, we have Message... What does that really help, right? Uh, I guess we can go into Bestial Magnumut too to have an interruption. Because right now, Indigo is not really doing anything anyway. So we might as well try to go into the Bestial Magnumut. And if he ashes us, then we, we get something out of it, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, Bestial Magnumut is a Dragon level 6... 25 2000 so we need something in combination with that dragon level 6 25 2000 i don't think we do actually have anything uh, that combos off with any of that right now but i guess we just try to get to dragoodies then since we can't get to that so we're gonna does this have anything in common with dragoodies we'll get to dragoodies instead we're gonna banish the 
blocker and then we will try to get to something else and see what we get to. We can get to Tiamaton. We can get to Goblinburg. I think Dragoodies is probably best just in case. Messenger of Peace fails for some reason. So we'll just normal summon out. Barrier statue. We'll activate the Dragoodies. And then we'll activate Messenger of Peace. And we have discard one discard for the Dragoodies. And then we have Messenger of Peace in circulation. So overall, not the worst hand. Uh, kind of similar to what our original deck does. But instead we have, uh, I guess, more Psychics. All right, let's see what our opponent's doing here. They're taking a, a little while to make a play. Probably because we, this is a fairly annoying board to play through. Our opponent's going to normal summon out Ice Knight. In case 400 for each Aqua Monster, which is actually bad for this card. Once per turn, you can normal summon one Water Monster during your main phase in addition to your normal summon set. That's not even that bad. Then you're locked into waters. That's a pretty good card. I've never even heard of this card. Ice Knight. Double water normal summon. It's really not a bad card. Um, if I... I mean, again, I always say if I pull this or if I pull that. But, like, you need a lot of water monsters for me to want to play that. And he's going to summon a Melfi out. Which he can't use because of the barrier statue anyway. Uh, but he's got the Melfi and he's got the Ice Knight. He can not He can attack with the Melfi, but he can't really attack with the Ice Knight. Uh, we can attack him, though. That's nice. I'm going to go to battle phase. He's going to realize he can't attack anyway. A lot of people just absolutely have never read this card. They're just, like, in shock. Uh, he's going to attack us. We're not going to activate Dragoodies because we have more attack than he does. Uh, but, yeah, he's going to just crash into our monster for no reason. Maybe he thought he could activate something quick effect. He could do something. For a second there, I thought it was a computer because of the name, but, like, then again, a computer isn't really using effects. Like, they, they're not using the double normal summon effect of Ice Knight. So, I don't think he would have done that. He's going to go directly to end phase, which is fine with us. We're going to draw a card, Sakuratsu Armor, and, uh, yeah, we're going to pay. We're going to pay the life points. We're going to do that. I think I'm just going to attack and... Do I attack over this? No, I don't attack over this. I think we just set and pass. Because just in case he draws another another summon here, we can use it for Dragoodies if we need to. We have Sakuratsu Armor, Messenger of Peace, Dragoodies, Barrier Statue. And our opponent is going to activate the... Raigeki Break on the end phase. Which is a smart time to activate Raigeki Break. He can use it to against our Barrier Statue, actually. He's going to discard a Ubel. Mad random. He's got Ubel, Ice Knight. I guess he would have normal summoned Ubel, maybe. Or tribute summon for Ubel. He's going to be able to target and pop one of our cards. He's going to pop his own card. What was that about? All right, this is a bot. <laughs> That's hilarious. This bot had me like on the ropes for a second there. It was like a masochist bot. This is actually something I've noticed. Uh, this is a new like breed of bots that they've created. The newest breed of bots are actually masochist bots. So they just they just build whatever like they just put a bunch of random cards in their deck and they just play that. And that's that's been actually the newest brand of bots. Because for a while it was self DK, but now they've been doing these bots. And these bots, technically speaking, are better than self DK bots because at least they attack and do other things like they normal summon, special summon, etc. And there's been close, we've actually had close calls with these like masochist bots. Like that one time where the guy randomly had an honest in hand. It's like, why do you have that? He just had it. But now he's got Revival Jam, which still can't attack as Messenger of Peace. All right, we're going to draw the Mech Knight Yellow Star, which we cannot do anything with at this moment. Uh, but it's fine. So we're going to go ahead and pay the life points. We're going to enter the battle phase. And we're going to attack over the Revival Jam. And we're going to use the Dragoodies, discarding the Psy Station. And we're just going to attack over that. And then we're going to... He can use its effect. Pay a thousand to special summon it back. But even if he does that, he can't special summon it because of the barrier statue anyway. Alright, and that is the end of that. That was indeed a bot. He just kept attacking me and I kept Dragoodies. And it, it's just the same loop over and over again. But uh, yeah, that took a long time. But it, we did win that one. We've got one legacy ticket. Let's open up this master pack here. We've got a hollow in this one. That's pretty cool to see. But again, I don't really care about the hollows anymore, but I mean, I got multiple here. We've got Cosmo Wicked Witch, which is the other one. 
Banish this card, special someone a Cosmo from your hand, which works with the other Cosmos. Pay 1,000 life points, can't can be destroyed by card effects. Um, honestly, not bad. Level 4, special summon, I mean, normal summon, uh, pretty good effect. Works with the rest of our Cosmos. Fire formation, formation card. Pendulum scale, just wow, that looks crazy. That looks like a really, really nice card. So this card can do a lot for pendulums. Uh, but it's a little bit slow. Uh, Summoning Swarm is a B Trooper card. Not a B Trooper. Uh, is it B Trooper? Yeah, Battle Wasp. That's what it is. Battle Wasp card. Another Bujinki card. We've pulled so many Bujinki cards. It's actually kind of crazy. I have to I have to look at everything. Uh, then we've got Dimension Slice. This is another copy of Dimension Slice. So we have two copies now. And then we've got Neo Flamevel Lady. Which is not a bad card. You can send a fire from hand to grave your target and monster broken controls in your opponent's graveyard, banish it. Not even that bad. Level 4. Uh, probably pretty decent for our fire control deck. Probably pretty good for our fire control deck. Uh, if this card, if, if a card is banished from your opponent's graveyard while you control this monster, send a fire monster 200 or less defense from deck to graveyard. I don't know how much that really helps us, but overall, it's actually one of the better flame bell cards, because it's a modern flame bell card. And then Cosmo Wicked Witch is pretty good. Um, yeah, and then we got to look at these Bujins. And then our super here is another B Trooper card. Uh, this is not B Trooper, this is Battle Wasp, but we got a B Trooper card. This is a free token, essentially, if I remember. Yeah. So, first, I'm going to B Trooper token. Then, if you control a uh, big to uh, big insect monster, you can destroy one spawn trap card. I mean, it's a, it's a free token summon that doesn't really lock us into anything. It's a free token, which actually. It's a normal summon. Yeah, it's a token with no like stipulations on it so this actually works for our normal monster deck uh, because we just summon a free token and then link spider and then special summon with that so essentially in our link normal monster deck this is a free link spider out of nowhere so probably a pretty good card in that deck uh that'll work in there and cosmo good Witch will work in that chaos deck the new one that we have all right let's open this legacy ticket here let's see what we get out of here maybe we get something cool out of this uh, we've got Burning Algae, which we already have, and Apprentice Piper, which is a decent card, but uh, not super usable uh, for us. Alright, so this card goes in our normal monster deck, because it's a free token, essentially, that can link Spider up. And then for our other deck, which is now named after a person, the Chaos deck, we're going to go ahead and add the Cosmo Wicked Witch, which actually does work. We have Wicked Witch and Good Witch, and Wicked Witch actually, like I said, it protects itself, and it can special summon one of the big Cosmo ships, which is kind of cool. This is another deck. It's kind of infuriating that when I was in practice, like, I, when I played a lot of these decks, I got to do so much cool stuff uh, with all of these different decks. So for this deck, for example, I in, in practice, I got to summon the Cosmos, and I got to do all of this crazy stuff, and then I get in the game, and it's like, it's either a bot or like, you know, like a super heavy samurais all right we have another game here pretty good hand honestly we've got book of lunar eclipse dimensional fissure jumper is probably the least usable card in our hand right now so we're just going to activate this and then we're going to set all the rest of this stuff I think this should be good i will book of lunar eclipse i could set but i might end up discarding it for the discard cost booking is pretty good but we have the dimensional fissure right now and we have Dynamisk is probably better, so I mean, I guess for versatility, I should probably set this card and uh, pass on this here. But overall, it's pretty good hand here. Our opponent's gonna set a card and activate Toon World, which is fine with me. I mean, if we're playing against Toons, oh, self TK, self TK, and they're getting screwed over by uh, Dimension. This is like classic self TK at this point. This is like the self TK I haven't seen in a while. Self TK recently has become like a uh, like a really slow deck, but this one, this is like a classic self TK with Kozaki and all this other stuff. Uh, but Small World, I'm going to probably activate Small World. I want to get to a bigger monster and win this turn. But regardless, we win the duel here anyway. So, all right, so our opponent has self TK themselves again. We get a free pack out of that. We burn some damage. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, fair enough. Let's go. Uh, Let's go uh, open some packs. Uh, we're also going to rank up. Not that it really matters that we ranked up because getting past Platinum Tier 4 is the thing that we've been having a lot of trouble with. Right, let's open a Master Pack. Still need to pull more Vigium. Still need to pull a lot more stuff. So 
plenty of things that we can still pull that are really good that are rare so as a matter of fact there's commons that i now want we got to create like a wish list or something first card is divine temple of the snake eye we can place a snake art car eye card from our hand deck or graveyard and spawn trap card zone i mean this isn't a bad card it just isn't really usable for us unfortunately so i don't think we're going to be able to do anything with that this is a great card but we don't have the rest of this deck if we did we'd play it uh, another dragoonity which is a dragon um a monster equipped with this card destroys the most of my battles okay we can special summon or we can add another monster a little slow uh, this card's not bad. Three link monsters. It's a fusion monster. It's a dragon. So technically speaking, we can make this with the dragon maid spell. Because, yeah, it's, I mean, we're special for the extra deck by attributing the above cards you control. Oh, you don't use polymerization. This is a contact fusion with three link monsters. Wow, okay. That's not really that bad. This can attack all monsters your opponent controls. When an attack is in... The, um, when attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's monster, banish one link monster, the same link rating, destroy that opponent. Honestly, not really a bad card. It can attack all monsters our opponent's controls. It's three link monsters. In that deck, in our normal monster deck, it's pretty easy for us to summon a lot of like link monsters pretty easily. So I actually think that this card kind of works. We'll probably just throw it in there. It's, it's really not bad. It's just a contact fusion with three links. As long as we're using things like Link Spider and like Link Ones and stuff, this is actually fairly easy to make, honestly. Uh, and then we've got this is another. We have another copy of this. This is a Valiance card, Mathmac Multiplication. Uh, this card's not one of the ones that are really, really good for us anyway. And then we've got another Hollow Perform Pal Lady Ange. Another. The pendulums don't stop. Uh, this card's not actually that bad. It has the its pendulum scale is really good. It's a it's a one. So I mean that's a low scale. It's good. Um, and then it has an an effect where if attack is declared within a with when a, when battle is basically when our our monsters are battling, uh, we can discard a pendulum monster and our opponent's monster loses a thousand attack. It's kind of like another Dragoodies. Um, and then its other effect is even better actually because it has an effect where. Uh, we can discard this and a perform pal monster and then we draw two cards that's pretty that's pretty good uh for the for the for the pendulum deck that's a really good effect you get to draw two cards and if this card's in the graveyard or if we control any odd eyes which unfortunately i don't think we have a lot of odd eyes monsters if we did we'd be in really better shape um we can place this card directly in the pendulum zone so essentially we discard draw two and then we get to put this back in the scale for free I, i'm not unhappy with this this is a this is a pretty solid card. And then our last card is Magic Key World, which is not bad, but it's a... Um, yeah, it's actually... It protects any normal monsters. You can add a Magic Key. If we get more Magic Keys, I will play them, but this card's not bad. It adds a Magic Key card on activation, which is good, and then it, when a normal monster, non-token, is about to be destroyed, it just won't be destroyed. That's good, and then... Yeah, it can be decent in our normal deck, but I would rather have more magic key cards. Otherwise, without it, it's kind of kind of pointless. Uh, but overall, these pulls aren't that bad, actually. We've got this is usable, this is usable, this is maybe usable. But this is really actually pretty good for our, uh, for our pendulum deck, uh, depending on if we have odd eyes and perform pal stuff. All right, we have one legacy ticket. Let's see what we get out of this one. See if we get anything too crazy. I don't know, but we'll see. So we've got the Elemental Hero Inferno and Mirror Mail. So basically just when a monster, when our monster gets attacked, our opponent's monster becomes the same attack. I don't really, we just have better stuff than that. And then Inferno, um, I, we, I don't know if we have Lady Heat and Heat, but even if we did, I don't think we would play this. Plus we don't have Polymerization anyway. Yeah, I'm going to add this to our... Um, normal monster deck because we summon link monsters fairly easily in this one and we have like tokens and stuff so we can like use like wandering souls to get tokens on board pretty quickly and uh same thing with this magic key world thing i might keep it in there maybe if we pull more magic key cards that would be useful so i'm going to save those i think that could work in there and then for our other deck here yeah for those decks i think that's good and then for our pendulum pile deck let's add this card this performer pal card right here and then on top of that let's check something else let's check let's check these odd eyes cards do we have any odd eyes cards because i don't actually think that we do have any odd eyes cards we have odd eyes gravity dragon supreme king odd eyes i guess we have this he's a level eight so 
we have a nine scale, maybe we can summon them. So I think the only one we have is that one. The rest of these are not odd eyes monsters. Yeah, this is our only, this is the problem. We only have, we have a handful of odd eyes. We have Vortex, we have uh, Supreme King, we have this dude, which we don't have a way to really summon. And then we have this dude, which we're not gonna be able to summon because we don't have the appropriate ritual card. So right now we don't have enough odd eyes cards to really make her super usable, but she's definitely a fairly good card actually. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to use her though. All right, since I'm, I'm going to go back to this deck and give it another try. I don't think I gave it really a fair shake because um, this is the chaos deck because uh, most of the time when we played it, we were playing at like peak hours. So everyone was like on meta decks. So we didn't really get to like really have fun with it. Um, so I guess we'll give this deck another try and see if we can play it again. All right, so we won the coin flip. We opted to go second. This is our hand. Um, I'll say this, Chinese players are one of two things. It's either a tier one deck or it's, yeah, it's always super heavy samurai. It's either a tier one deck or it's a bot every single time. There's no in between. You never get them playing anything else. Tier one, bot, no matter what. So they're gonna scare claw again. Uh, I mean, again, this kind of sucks that, you know, we get, we play a fun deck and every time we play a fun deck, we're like faced against the meta instantly. And then when we play like a deck that's like floodgates and it's, it's horrible, we, we, we get, we get to play against like the fun stuff. For whatever reason, our opponent has ended on two monsters here, which I'm perfectly fine with here. Uh, they've ended on super heavy samurai and this super heavy samurai and that's it and a Gamma in Graveyard, I, because they didn't do much, I have nothing to really Santa Claus here, I mean, I could Santa Claus this, but, yeah, yeah, I don't really have a point to, so I can Santa Claus that, I could back to square one this, but that's not gonna help, I can back to square one this, that would probably be actually intelligent to back to square one this card, because then he'll draw it again, and he obviously didn't do much with it, so I'm gonna back to square one this card, so I'm gonna back to square one, I'm gonna send, uh, What's the rest of our hand looking like? A lot of darks, a lot. It's half light, half dark. It doesn't really matter what I send. So I guess the they literally have the same attack, so it's like actually doesn't matter. So we're gonna discard light pulsar because technically we can summon it from the graveyard if we need to, and we'll put that back on the top of his deck so he draws it again. Then I believe we just activate Ogo. Wow. Okay. I'm in disbelief. Okay, we just, I can't believe that worked. Okay, <laughs> we just won that one. Fantastic. Fantastic. We got three legacy tickets. By the way, we've won the last four duels here, which is really cool. So we definitely have to open something cool. Uh, let's check what our opponent was playing. I mean, they're playing a pretty standard deck. I think they just didn't open well. And we were gonna, they were scared that they were gonna get looped, which we were gonna loop them. Which one did they have just now? We have, they have this card, so we're gonna put it back on their deck and Essentially, we were going to loop them. All right, so let's open a master pack. Our packs have been lackluster in terms of pulls this, this episode. Uh, we've been pulling a lot of repeats, so hopefully we get something new and good. Spiral Gear, Last Resort. This card's not bad, but we only have like one other spiral monster that's really usable. Snow Dust Dragon. By removing four ice counters from anywhere on the field, I don't even know where we would get ice counters. I don't know what that is affiliated with. Owl of Luck lets you add a field spell, but... Obviously, that's not going to help. Uh, we've got another Dragoonity monster, which isn't too bad. We did pull a Dragoonity card that wasn't too bad a long time ago. We got a Chronomaly card with the crazy artwork, but uh, with this Moa head thing. Yeah, this is a cool looking card, but I don't. we don't have enough Chronomalies to make it playable. Worm Ugly, and it certainly is ugly. So we've got that uh, special summon. That, yeah, that's not really going to help us that much. Blue Thunder T45 might actually help us. It destroys an opponent's monster by battle. We get to summon a token. Good for our machine deck. It's it's really not a bad card. It's just a bit slow. Because we have to destroy a monster by battle. Then we get a token. You know, an old Yu-Gi-Oh would have been cool. I love these space theme cards. Like, look at that artwork. It looks beautiful. And then our last card is the pack lied to us for no reason. Uh, we've got a Worm Queen. Which is another card here. We can tribute summon this card by tributing one Worm Monster. So, actually, we pulled both pieces. We pulled Worm Ugly and we pulled Worm Queen. They work well together. Um, and her effect's actually not that bad. Honestly, it's not that bad because you can tribute a reptile worm monster, special summon another reptile worm monster with a level equal or lesser to that monster. Like, not even bad. And then this 
is if you tribute summon this for a worm, which is worm queen, I mean, we pulled like a combo here, but like it's a, kind of an unsearchable, not so great combo, but we, we pulled a combo out of one pack, uh, which is kind of incredible. Um, I, maybe the war the blue thunder T45 might be usable, really nothing else. Okay, let's open up these legacy tickets and see what we get out of these. Uh, we, like I said, we still have other pa Time Wizard! Do we play that? And Horn of the Unicorn. Do we play Time Wizard? Uh, so this card's a little dangerous because if it's sent to the graveyard, we have to place it on top of the deck. Sometimes we can actually get stuck with this card on top of the deck and then just end up losing. Uh, so there's Horn of the Unicorn. And then there's Time Wizard, which could win us games. Uh, yeah, we it could. I mean, because it, it is like essentially like Raigeki, but I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe uh, maybe in the going second deck, I mean, we're already kind of rolling the dice anyway. Guard Dog, your opponent can't special the monsters for the rest of the turn. That's not bad. And then V Salamander is a Utopia support card. We don't have enough of Utopia stuff. Uh, but this is actually somewhat interesting because we can't... It, if we have a way, like if we played Prediction Princess or something, it might be good. But outside of Prediction Princess, this this might not really be all that great for us. And let's see what else we can do. Yeah, that dog is kind of crazy in Prediction Princess. Then we've got Black Terra, Return to the Hand, not bad. And then uh, this card's not really too usable for us. But yeah, like I said, Time Wizard's kind of interesting. That's that's definitely something to consider. Time Wizard's kind of crazy. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's looking pretty good. We have Good Witch, we have Santa Claus, we have Chaos Sorcerer, Sword Revealing Light, and Dark World Dealing, so pretty solid hand going second. Uh, we can book his entire board. He is playing Sword Soul, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to deal with what he's got. But he just sat on one monster, okay. Uh, let's see, we've got a Good Witch, and we've got a Wicked Witch. So, hmm. I mean, this, see, this is the problem with dealings. Like, our opponent obviously bricked, and he's got kind of a shitty hand. But I'm about to dealings and unbrick him. And I'm not going to be able to OTK him, because my deck doesn't really have the capacity to OTK. I don't even know what to discard. I mean, I guess we discard Good Witch, because then when this Witch dies, we're going to be able to do something. We're going to be able to go into Chaos Sorcerer, so I guess we discard this. And then this can actually attack over this. So now we normal summon Wicked Witch. And this has the effect to summon a Cosmo monster from the hand. Or it can uh, protect itself for a thousand life points. Too usable. So we're going to attack over this card right here. The, we're going to attack over the Taya. If the game will allow us to. Well, if he, it depends on what he has. Wow, that was really random. Okay. He's going to negate the attack. Yeah, okay, he's going to be able to negate the attack, essentially. That is unexpected. Alright, so yep, he's going to negate our attack. We're going to go to main phase two. And I, I could activate this. I could activate sort of concealing light, and then... That way, he can't synchro summon with these, because this is a worm, this is a tuner, so I'm going to go ahead and activate this. That way, he can't synchro summon with these, and they're stuck face down for a little while. And since they're going to be stuck, they can't, yeah, he can't synchro summon with them, so I guess that, that's actually not a bad play. He's going to have those stuck face down, he can't synchro summon, and we'll just attack over them one by one. So we'll just set this card face down, and we'll pass here. Also, what I could have done is I could have Santa Claus, but I mean... I'll save Santa Claus for, like, a Baron or something important. Alright, our opponent's gonna set one, and they're going to normal summon Mystery Shell Dragon. He's gonna attack. I'm not really sure if I should, uh, if I should use the Forbidden Chalice to, to defeat this Mystery Shell Dragon, or I should... He's gonna use Blackout. Okay, well, Blackout's fine, because I have... He's gonna tribute that, right, as you pop that. And he's going to pop the Sword of Concealing Light and my face down. Mm. I mean, there's no point to activate it to negate my own card here. So I guess we just let it resolve. I don't want to pop my own card. I mean, what is negating my own card going to do at this point? So we, we might as well lose our cards. I don't understand the, the point of going to battle for LMK. So he's going to be able to use that since he... There was attack declared. 
This Golden Sword Soul card is really actually not that bad. I, I, I don't even know who those Golden Sword Soul people are, but this this it's really not a bad card, honestly. It's in any attack is declared. It could just summon itself for free. And end phase, he didn't even. Um, okay, that's fine. That is completely, completely, totally fine. Uh, we're gonna draw a Luber, Bistial a Luber, Bistial a Luber's not bad. We can go to battle phase here with Bistial a Luber and this Cosmo Goodwitch. We can go to battle phase, wipe out two cards. Yeah, we can do that. So let me see that the what are the attacks and defenses? Actually, one of them's 15. The other one, how much is Taya? Taya is. All right, Taya is 15 defense. So we can wipe both of the face down ones out. Okay, so we're going to attack over this right here. And then we're going to attack over the face down, which I do. I want to attack over Taya or the other one. I mean, does it really matter which one I attack over? I mean, Taya is technically better. So we'll attack over Taya. Yeah, we'll attack over the Taya because Taya is a worm. So if he draws blackout, he can do stuff. And then we go to main face two. Uh, this only banishes face up cards, unfortunately, but We'll see, we have Chaos Sorcerer and the other card left for next turn. So we'll go into Time Thief now. That way we can start playing the game a little more interestingly. Time Thief here. And I think we pass. We can go into Santa Claus, but I think that's not really going to help. And then when we detach from Time Thief, we can actually fill our graveyard with lights and darks. And uh, do quite a bit of stuff like that. Alright, so we're going to activate Time Thief to grab a card off the top of our opponent's deck. They're playing an interesting deck for sure. It's not standard source. They have Mystery Shell Dragon. Uh, obviously, it's not a trap or a spell. That would have been better, but you know, it's it's better than it's better than nothing. They're gonna flip that. I'm not like super concerned about what he's gonna be able to do because like we do have outs. That is a great draw. We do have Santa Claus and we do have Chaos Sorcerer, so we have outs to stuff. But yeah, Moe is pretty good, but he can't reveal a worm in his hand, so. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but he can still go into Ch Chen Yang uh, because this is a tuner and this is a non-tuner. So per I guess we made the wrong decision. We should have attacked over the, um, we should have attacked over this and left the Taya on field. But I mean, you never know, which which you don't you never know what they're gonna draw. So they're gonna go into Shi Shao, and then they're going to search and they're gonna be able to they're gonna be able to search and draw a card. All right, they're going to search out the Strategist Long Wand. Now, we hope they didn't draw a Worm, because if they drew a Worm, then we have to deal with Baron de Fleur. And then this is over for us. Tribute a Monster Special Summon this card. Why in the world would you do that? Okay. That's fine with me. That is, during the main phase, Tribute a Monster Special Summon that our, I, I, he just, he just absolutely threw the game away. He, he could have gone to Baron. He could have gone to... We go to battle phase. Okay, let's see what this does. Before damage calculation, if, if your worm monster battles an opponent's monster, but you can destroy both that opponent's monster and this card. I'll just take the damage. I'm good. I'll take the damage. I'll detach. And I'll... Yeah, I'll take 2400. And then he can just... I'll take the 24. I... I Maybe he just doesn't have Baron... Yeah, six cards in his extra deck. He probably doesn't have Baron de Fleur. How did this guy even get into Platinum? And then we'll get this dude back. He probably doesn't have Baron de Fleur. And then we draw a card. We draw a Light Pulse. Sorry, he's not bad either. Uh, we're going to use Time Thief. We're going to grab a card off the top of his deck. Which is going to be a Spell card. I can't dodge anything anyway, so I might as well just use this now. I might as well draw. See what else we get. Since we only have Raigeki, I can't. It's not like I can... Oh, just chain it later. Uh, it would have been awesome to have some of these Cosmos. Now, let's see. We have a light and a dark. We have a light and a dark. And then we can banish that card. And we can put Santa Claus on the field, but then I'm good. I can't even out it. It's 2,500 defense. So we're going to banish the Good Witch. And then we're going to banish the Luber. Special summon this out. And then we're going to activate Chaos Source. He's going to black out. That sucks. That really sucks. That sucks. Okay, he's going to black out. I mean, there's nothing we could have done differently there. We just got to go to end phase. There's nothing we could have done differently. I mean, we have a lot of darks in grave, but no lights. So we have lights in hand, but no darks. <laughs> it's, it's like an endless loop of stupidity. 
Uh, I know he has, he's got one of the, the level 6 Sword Soul monsters, so as long as he doesn't draw another... Yep, yeah, okay, he didn't draw another one, so... As long as he didn't draw another worm, we were good. Eclipse is not doing anything. This Neither of us have any spawn trap cards, so our hand is just four bricks. I, I will say this, at least this deck is getting a fair shake, because at the beginning it just wasn't getting anything. It was like bots and... Uh, bots and, and nothing, but now it's getting like, you know, to actually play. And, and see what it's actually like. So now he's going to go into the Sword Soul cards. It's bad for us. So he drew finally a Strategist. Then he has another Strategist. He can summon a token. He's going to be able to burn us. He's going to be able to get to a big monster. Which is not good. But we need to draw something. Because right now we are in... We are living in Brick City right now. I don't, did we open any spell cards? Yeah, we did. We did. We did indeed open spell cards. He drew... Uh, Chen Ying is a really good card. Now we have the out because we have the Santa Claus, but he's going to burn us and he's going to attack us. Thank God we have the out because this card is actually really tough to have. This is one card that I would love to pull personally because it's like it's a generic rank 10 and it has really good effects. It protects itself, it banishes cards. It's a really good card. I would love to pull it. All right, we're going to draw for turn. Please, something usable. Tricky is usable. Okay, Tricky is definitely usable. But let's see. We can tribute over his monster, so that's first things first. Cause I think if a card is banished, he can banish something else. Yeah, if if a card is banished, you can banish one card. So his effects are actually really dangerous. I think I'm going to summon this. Now the problem is we have Tricky, but we have nothing else to really do with Tricky. Actually, 20, this 25. Santa Claus is really, really, like... Santa Claus outs his monster, so I'm going to summon it no matter what. But the problem is we don't have any spell or trap cards. So we're going to special summon this because we kind of have to. I'm going to summon it right here. Uh, we can activate the Tricky to discard either Forerunner or Indigo Eclipse. So if we draw a Cosmo, we can summon Forerunner. If we draw... If our opponent sets something, then we can summon Indigo Eclipse. I don't even know which one's more or less usable right now. Technically, n neither of them are really all that usable. So, I guess we... Oh, man, I just realized what I could have done, but... I mean, it still wouldn't have changed anything. So, technically, I could have summoned a Link monster and then this underneath, but it wouldn't have changed anything, because then we only get to a Link 3. So, that doesn't actually out this anyway. Uh, we're going to summon the Tricky. Yeah, we're going to summon the Tricky. I think we're going to discard... I mean, what, what, what's... I, I think we discard the, the Forerunner. I think the Mech Knight being usable is probably a higher likelihood. And then we summon this in defense. And then we can special summon this. But again, it doesn't really do anything right now. So I think our life points are just very low. Yeah, I think we special summon this in attack mode. Actually, we don't need to special summon. We're just, we probably just pass on this. Because, I mean, we're going to banish stuff. But what's the point? We don't have. It's not like we can draw off of it anyway. So I think we're just going to pass here and then save for next turn just in case we have to do stuff and then unfortunately our opponent is going to be able to draw off the santa claus and like i said that was that was our only out to the chain yang that was that was literally the only thing we had we didn't have any other outs he's going to go to his end phase okay that's that's great uh forerunner another forerunner and i guess we can tribute summon for a forerunner i think that's the play we have to tribute summon for forerunner so we're going to banish forerunner and we're going to banish not that it matters, but Chaos Sorcerer must be... I mean, it doesn't matter. We'll just banish Chaos Sorcerer. Special Summon out. Light Pulsar. And then we're going to Tribute Summon for Forerunner. And Forerunner's a pretty decent card, right? You can't be targeted by your opponent's card effects, among other things. And then gain... During your standby phase, gain 1,000. If this card's destroyed, we can... Uh, banish this card for someone when level 6 or lower Cosmo from the deck. I mean, all, all the floats. So it does more than the indigo eclipse so we're going to attack over this and we're just going to pass here so at least we have a monster that can't be targeted he's gone through a, a, a he's gone through his long wands which is good because he can't burn us out of nowhere he's gone through two of them i don't know if that card is still semi-limited i remember it was before it might be unlimited now i don't i don't know it doesn't say in game uh but obviously that is a tough card to sometimes play against i don't know what could possibly be in his hand right now dark hole wow okay so we lost our monster, but we can banish it, right? And then we can summon a Cosmo monster from the deck. I think, we do, is Dogfight? Dogfighter, actually he might have uh, Ash or something. Dogfighter is 
a yeah it's level six so we can summon that or the good wish i think dog fight is better because it can summon tokens so i'll summon that in defense and then hopefully we're able to get back to our turn because then we could summon tokens another dark hole you've got to be kidding me i mean our monster floats which is good but like what are the chances two dark holes so we're gonna activate the dog fighter i wish we had uh I wish we had Branded Regained on board, because then we'd be going so Ash Blossom. You gotta be kidding me, man. And then this is, this duel is so, like, low on resources that this Indigo is just not doing a thing right now. At least, did I, that didn't banish Light Pulse, alright? Yeah, if I draw a dark, I can use it. There we go. There we go. I guess we can summon Light Pulsar, but, I mean, we get Light Pulsar, we can Ogo Pogo. Put a monster on board, or possibly whiff, I mean... I think we put a monster on board. I think putting a monster on board is better than whiffing. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, I could have ended up summoning Ogopogo, or I could have just discarded the Ogopogo and passed. So I guess Light Pulsar on board attacking is better than nothing. Uh, we got a bit unlucky with the double Dark Hole into Ash Blossom, but... I mean, it's not, not the worst situation. And then we've got Branded Regained. If we had that right now, oh my god, we'd be in such great shape if we had Branded Regained. Because we've banished so much. Alright, he's going to normal summon Moe. Does he even have a... Does he have a worm in hand? That's the question. No, I guess he didn't have a worm in hand. Yeah, end phase. Okay, he didn't have a worm in hand. Should have just saved it, buddy. Should have just saved it. And then we get a Mech Knight Yellow Star. These Mech Knights are kind of bricking us, but like... I mean, whatever. They are bricking us. But it's not the end of the world. Like I said, I, 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 for a while I've been against playing the Mech Knights. And this is kind of the exact reason why I've been against playing them. It's like they're good, but they're like... It's a 2,000 like 2, special summon, but it, it relies on our opponent placing stuff in a certain manner. And then us placing stuff in a certain manner. So we have to draw spawn trap cards in order to make it usable. Like this, but they don't have anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I guess we just save it. Like, if they had a monster, we could have placed, you know, made things happen, but we don't. So we're going to attack again. So we're one attack away from winning, but we're also one attack away from losing. Climactic game. Then we've got a decent follow-up. We have Lightning Vortex, and we have Mech Knight Yellow Star. So, decent follow-up, but nothing too, too crazy here. He's going to end phase. Okay. That is fine with me. Now, this guy's probably a little newer to the deck, so he's maybe a little... Yeah, he's a little newer to the deck, so he doesn't know how, how it works fully, but he probably could have beaten us there in a lot of... He 100% he, he could have beaten us, but if we switch seats, we'd be, there'd be a different result. Uh, but we, we uh, he definitely could have beaten us there, but, I mean, what can you do? He's new to the deck, I guess. We got three Legacy tickets out of that one. Out of curiosity, this is our opponent's deck. They've got three Dark Holes. They've got all of the Sword Soul cards. This card, honestly, isn't even really that bad. The Golden Sword Soul, really not a bad card. And then he's got, he's just playing three of everything, essentially, which he probably should change. He actually did have Baron, Baron de Fleur. If he had gone into that, we probably would have lost. Um, and then he's got, yeah, he's got everything. He, he, I don't, <laughs> he's got Warlord Savage, not a single Link Monster in sight. All right, let's open the Master Pack. This is going to be the Master Pack the, to end the episode, actually. And then we're going to open one of the Royal Rare, Guaranteed Royal Rare. So we're going to open one of those random ones, too, just to see what we get. We've got Power Adapter, which is a Morphtronic card. We've got an Abyss Actor, Sassy Rookie, which is an Abyss Actor card, obviously. We have the Abyss Actor, funny enough, we have the Abyss Actor, pen, not Pendulum, Link Monster, which is a UR. Uh, I didn't even read this. Dimmered Path, target a Spellcaster effect monster, add it to your hand. Wow, that's not bad. We have a Spellcaster deck that's just generic, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, fanzies, don't have enough of those. We've got Devotee of Nephthys, don't have the ritual spells needed to play this deck. Uh, we've got Hydra's not a very good card, unfortunately. A contribute a monster with a Predator Plant counter, but you'd have to be playing against something. Shaman of the Tenyi is a really good card, but it requires two Worm Monsters. That is a really good card. Really, really good card. Especially for our normal monster deck, but we don't have enough Worms at all. We have one Worm. We have the... It's actually right here on this. We have the Nahata. Uh, if we pull more Worms, that's going to be a really good card, because it can essentially pop anything as long as a, a non-effect monster battles but we don't have enough worms to do this i have to check what worms we have but i don't think that's going to be playable and then melfi pup 
All right, let's open these uh, legacy tickets here. Let's see what we get out of this. Um, hopefully we get something interesting out of this. We've got... This is, yeah, Flame Lord, Ritual Spell, not good. Uh, Moonlit, Papillion. When this card is sent to the field to grave, you're special summon one level four lower butter spy card from your deck. Not even a bad... See, here's the problem with this. This is actually an XC deck, and they're not... This card has to be sent from field to graveyard, then it summons another, essentially level 4 butterfly. It's an XC deck, but monsters that are detached from XC material aren't sent to the graveyard. Or, I'm sorry, they're not... When this card is sent to from field to... They're not sent from field to graveyard, so it wouldn't even trigger under that. But overall, it's not like a terrible card, actually, because it floats into another butterfly. So if we link with it, we get another butterfly. Uh, I actually got to check if it said you can or not. Uh, this card's not really that bad, either. Uh, then we've got Wonder Glover. All right, so this is not maybe the best card that we've got. Wonder Glover. Uh, I didn't really see anything too special there. And then let's see what else we've got here. We've got Man Eater and a Cloudian card, which I don't think is going to work. So just to confirm with this card, when this card is sent to the grave, you can. So actually, no. If we use it as link material, it misses timing, unfortunately. So this card's a little too, a little too slow because of, uh, yeah, it says when you can. So. It will miss timing. And then like I promised, uh, because we won, actually last duel, last, yeah, last uh, episode we won three in a row. And then this episode we also won three in a row. But I don't want to overdo it, so I'm just going to open one of these because we did win in a one, we won three in a row two times. And I said we could, um, we could open one of these if I won three in a row. So I will open one of these. Uh, these are very random anyway, and it gives you one guaranteed UR, which we might not even use. There's such a wide range of these that are that suck, and then there's a yeah, you know, there's so many that suck and so many that are good. And like if we pull Chaos Max, for example, we can't even use it. Uh, but like there's a lot that we can pull that we can't even use. So we're gonna open one, and we're gonna see what we get. They're all gonna disappear. They're all gonna get mixed up, and then we get a random one. So let's see which one we get. Um, if it's too good, maybe we won't use it. But let's see. We got the Dark Magician pack. Let's see which one we get here. First of all, we got the Dark Magician pack, which we get to open one for free, and we'll see if we get anything good out of this. I don't know if we will. Um, an Abyss Act. And it's not Abyss. This is a uh, Mermal card. I don't even know why I said Abyss. A Gimmick Puppet card is not really usable for us. We've got a Live Twin, Frost, not really usable. Blessed Winds is an Aromatherapy card, not going to be usable. Magician of Chaos, Secrets of Dark Magic, it's a fusion spell, but we don't have any Dark Magicians. Uh, Dark Magic Expanded and Magician's Navigation. None of these are usable because obviously we don't have a Dark Magician. And then we get one free UR. I don't think that there's any UR that we can pull out of this pack that is really usable. So I guess we'll see just for fun what we get here. We've got Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight of Magic. Awesome looking card. Requires a Dark Magician and a level seven or higher Dragon or Warrior Monster. Uh, not a bad card. I've read this before. Definitely, it's not a bad card. It's just really not usable for us. If we, we'd need so much to summon this card, and unfortunately, we do not have that so much. So, cool looking card, but not really going to be usable for us. Not a single card we pulled here actually is going to be usable. All right, so this is the end of the episode. Uh, you know, thank you to all of the play, all the people who uh, created deck lists to play this, uh, Benjamin. Uh, Duel Links, Anti-Meta, and Trickster, all three of you. you know, thank you for creating deck lists. Um, if anybody else has a deck list, post it down below. Maybe I'll give it a try. A lot of you guys tell me to play stuff. Uh, today's been fun, though. A lot of different uh, decks that we got to play, experience new things. It's been a lot of fun. And on top of that, uh, we pulled some cards. Maybe not the best cards, but you know, it's been we had a lot of pulls this episode. And just to double check here, because uh, I said I would check it, uh, Bujin cards. We've been pulling a lot of Bujins, but I don't know if these are going to be used. I don't even know how to play Bujins. I just know they're all level 4s. I don't know if anything here locks us into Bujins, uh, but they're a pretty decent rank 4 engine as far as I remember. So I might have to take a look at these because if they're a decent rank 4 engine, we might be able to play them. I don't know what any of these do, but we pull what seems like every episode we pull a Bujin or two. So we might have to look at these and see if we can run them. Uh, but yeah, these decks have been quite fun. Uh, next next episode, we should get extra serious back to our regular deck. I'm probably going to try to master this one, see if I can get an absolute mastered version of this deck. 
because now we have dimensional fissure now we have a lot of stuff that we can run in this deck and even like stuff like this world challenge dragon is really not bad As any three link monsters turns into a 3000 attack monster can attack all other monsters so that should be quite interesting we have a lot of interesting stuff this is pretty good it can go into a link spider and possibly into this i mean there's there's a lot of cool combos to consider we, oh we got a second copy of this card which i have to keep in mind there's a lot of stuff that we pulled this episode that's been very interesting uh, that I have to keep in mind for next episode. But overall, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. La, 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 la.